Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. Thank you so much in advance. <laughs> Today we're jumping into r slash neckbeard stories! It actually comes from my personal subreddit, r slash redxreads. It's about a neckbeard firefighter. This is also from the OP that brought us Passion Beard, which is just wonderful. So glad to see him back on the channel. Of beards! And flames! Oh, are they like red-headed beards or something? No, it's a firefighter. I already spoiled it. Darn it! <laughs> I know what's going on for once in my life. That's so wonderful. I come to you today with a neckbeard tale from the most unlikely of places. A firefighter training academy. Yeah, definitely put your life into that neckbeard's hands. Great! Awesome! I can't wait! <laughs> <laughs> it was the first class that this specific department would be training, so it felt like a very special thing to get a chance at graduating as Generation 1 of this academy. A certain one of us, who had a neckbeard, did not think that it was a special enough occasion to rub together two of his crumbs of motivation and actually try. Yeah, he's a neckbeard. He expects everything to be handed to him on a silver platter. That seems to be about the way things go. I had been debating if the hero of this story checked enough boxes to be considered a neckbeard. He doesn't really play video games outside of Fortnite, <laughs> and he has no idea what anime even is. Despite this, I have still reached the conclusion that he definitely has a soul crusted in Dorito dust. Yes, and it is the beard on the inside that counts. He does have a neck beard on the outside as well. And maybe he's like a little bit of a, a Kevin hybrid. Just skimming over the story, I could definitely see some really dumb stuff going on. But even if it's not a neck beard story, just write it. Just write it anyways and say, hey guys, do you think it's a neck beard? And I will give you my honest opinion. So my next dilemma was naming this charming fellow. And I'm just going to call him Mike. Because he looks a bit like a fat Michael Sarah that was raised in the South. <laughs> uh, uh, I guess we didn't go with the beard naming convention. You know, firefighter beard or something. I'll go with Mike. I I'm cool with rolling with that. They don't all have to be so-and-so beard. Mike is fairly short. Rocks, or at least rocked, a gorgeous patchy neck beard. Always wears camo and tops the look off with big old cowboy boots. <laughs> oh god, dude. Uh, come on. Camo shorts and cowboy boots. That's what I imagine. He's also fat, an affliction that plagues many beards. If only a champion would appear to free all beard kind from the evil clutches of fast food, butter, and soda. He isn't mega obese, but... He got that pudge, and he has no discernible muscle mass underneath all of that. Yeah, I think uh, skinny fat, that's what we call it. <laughs> He's not like hugely overweight. He's just sort of uh, squishy, which I guess I would expect considering like he's a firefighter and all that stuff. All right, before it seems like I'm just the dude. Yeah, please no. I'd like to explain that I fully understand not everyone has the desire or even the time to build up your body. But I feel like if you're going to pursue something like firefighting, you should take your fitness seriously. Yeah, you're supposed to be out there saving lives and whatnot. It did start to lean a little bit into body shaming, but good, I'm glad you pulled it back, OP. You should want to be at your physical peak for both the victims that you're helping and your team. But Mike, yeah, Mike don't care. <laughs> I'll start with my first day of training with Mike, and I'll grade my first impression of him as a solid C-. He toddled in late to the very first day, clearly not in any sort of hurry. Come on, guy. You couldn't have at least buttered the bottom of your cowboy boots to slide in and gain some extra speed? Maybe make up a few minutes? And the truth is, he probably did butter up the bottom of his boots, but he licked it all off when he was waiting at the bus stop, right? 
<laughs> Maybe I'm going in a little hard on Mike. Maybe he'll turn out to be an amazing firefighter, but then I don't think this story would have been written. Hmm. I can generally get along with a wide range of people, and I always assume the best, so my first thought was, yeah, poor dude got stuck in traffic. At least he didn't actually miss anything. After knowing Mike, though, I am sure that he just didn't think it was important enough to leave a few minutes earlier. I gotta finish out this Fortnite game. I'm gonna rank top five, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. And there's another reason that I call him Mike. When all the students were assembled, the captain gave a short speech of what the coming months would be like, saying, It'll get hard at points, which prompted Mike to interrupt him, excitedly blurting out, eh, That's what she said! <laughs> <laughs> that's what she said! <laughs> Uh, she didn't say that. Just like Michael Scott from The Office. Good God, dude. Are you kidding me? The lowest hanging fruit. But I'm sure Mike thought it would make a great impression. He's like, that's right, bros. <laughs> Misogyny. <laughs> At this point, my brain crashed. The hamster running on the wheel in my head just had an aneurysm. Everyone turned to stare at him, and Mike looked so incredibly proud of himself. <laughs> I bet he thought everybody was going to think it was awesome. Unfortunately, we're not in eighth grade. <laughs> I did my best to fight back a smile, but it was a losing battle. And I still hope that I'm not judged too harshly by my peers for laughing. Oh! He got OP at the very least. I think I laughed at it too. All right, Mike, you won this round. <laughs> uh, I promise I wasn't laughing at his joke. I just couldn't help how silly and bizarre the situation was. Okay, you and me are in the same boat on that, OP. It's not actually a good joke. It's just a really awkward time to make that joke. A handful of awkward pity chuckles swept the room and the captain took it like a champ. He gave Mike a burnt stare and just kept plowing on. A burnt stare? <laughs> uh, with the Sesame Street references and everything. Perfect. After some introductory classwork and being told that fire is hot, blah, 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 we got familiarized with our structural gear. Structural gear means those big bunker pants and coat and face mask, all the stuff that we wear while inside of the burning building. Mike was a volunteer, so he already had his own issued gear. He was pretty smug about it, and you could just feel the contempt oozing from him. <laughs> Look at these plebeians putting on firefighting gear for the first time. <sighs> yeah, you might be a volunteer firefighter, but I don't think that it's going to translate the way you think it will. Great, you have some experience. Why don't you apply that? But just like OP said, he thinks he's God's gift, strolls into class late. I just can't sign off on any of this. I'm getting big neckbeard vibes already. It didn't really bother me because, yes, in fact, I was a newbie pleb and I wanted to learn everything that I possibly could. So if Mike had experience, why not stand next to him and see what I could possibly learn? Spoiler alert, I learned nothing. <laughs> well, yeah, he doesn't want to share because he knows as soon as any of this information gets out, you will quickly and easily overtake him. Neck beards are extremely insecure, first and foremost. And yeah, we are seeing that. So the captain had us disassemble our gear and lay it out before us, which was easy enough. The coat and pants each have multiple layers connected by buttons or zippers. Simply pulling these apart had the salty veteran Mike worked up with a bit of sweat. <laughs> Aw, sounds like you should have practiced up. Maybe skip a couple games of Fortnite and work on some cardio. Is that so difficult? The captain went on to explain each layer of the gear, and naturally next up was putting it all back together. Definitely less fun than taking it apart, but still very doable. 
Unless you're Mike, that is. <laughs> he somehow got his inner sleeve completely twisted around inside the outer shell of the jacket and connected the buttons incorrectly. I mean, in Mike's defense, buttons are really hard. How do you know what goes where? <laughs> I mean, as long as you align it, it should be relatively simple. But if you start incorrectly, then it's going to end up incorrectly. Simple as! It was exactly like when your friends yank the sleeve of your hoodie and tie the ends into a knot. You are a handless doofus until someone has mercy and unties it. My friends never did that to me. If they did, they wouldn't be friends for much longer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be a handless doofus. Well, Mike tried brute force and just shoving his hand through, but his underwhelming strength stat rolled a failure on that attempt. Oh, coming in with a bit of the life RPG stuff. We are going to have some stuff up on the channel or one of the channels quite soon related to that. I'm excited. That's like a sign from heaven that I should continue. Okay. <laughs> Then he tried some odd maneuver of twisting the outer layer while holding the inside, and I suppose that attempt would have used his dexterity stat, which was also very lacking and didn't get the job done. How did he even roll a fighter class at this point, especially a firefighter class? I guess it's all he could have rolled. He doesn't really have the charisma or the intelligence or wisdom, <laughs> as we've seen. Maybe he just maxed out his luck. I think Mike w would firmly roll a peasant class. You're not good enough to be anything else. I'm sorry. If we're sticking with the tabletop theming, yeah, peasant. That's it. By now, Mike was starting to drip sweat from his back-breaking grappling match. And I remembered the captain's speech about everyone here being a team, so I got down to see if I could help. As I said, I was still a pleb. So the great assistance that I could offer was... Yeah, I, I think you messed up your sleeve, man. <laughs> uh, okay. It was literally my first time touching this stuff, but uh, it's the thought that counts, right? You can't just leave a man struggling like that. And you're the only one in the class that stepped up OP? Good on you. You know, you didn't even have the experience, but you're like, eh, let me see if I can help somehow, maybe. While the help didn't seem to help all that much, at least you tried. A for effort. The captain took notice of two idiots fumbling around with a jacket sleeve and said, What's wrong? Is it too tight? Even in the midst of his high stakes battle, Mike's wit wasn't dulled one bit. As the sweat rolled down his face, he wheezed out, hey, That's what she said. <laughs> he got me again. Uh... Oh god, I am a child, aren't I? Tastefully executed and perfectly timed. Thank you so much, Mike. <laughs> uh, I'm dying. That's gonna be the, the, the running joke for this, isn't it? The one joke that he has. We had attracted a bit of a crowd at this point and wound up taking the whole jacket apart again being careful to snap the correct buttons in place. Like I said, you gotta start right and then it ends right. It's just amazing how that works. With the ordeal finally over, we moved on to the next stage, which was putting all of our gear on. All combined, the jackets, pants, helmets, and SCBAs weighed about 50 pounds. SCBA stands for Self-Contained Breathing Apparatus. Yeah, scuba! <laughs> it's almost exactly like a scuba tank. Scuba is just a name that means self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. Big air tank strapped to your back and a mask strapped to your face. Honestly, this is one of the things that I love the most about reading Reddit stories. We get to learn about a different side of life. Expand my frame of reference just a little bit. What's it like to be a firefighter? Hey, that sounds pretty cool. What's it like to firefight alongside a neckbeard? Hey, that sounds significantly less cool. <laughs> they also come with pass devices. That is personal alert safety system. When the tank is turned on with it, if it's motionless for 20 seconds, it starts blaring an alarm that gets progressively louder. 
This is to help out a firefighter who might be downed. If they can't call for help, it quickly lets others know that something is wrong. And even if they're still conscious, it helps them to get located by the team. That's pretty convenient. 20 seconds, that is a long time to be still inside of a building that's on fire. So, <laughs> yeah, I think a uh, good idea there. I don't know who came up with that, but tip of my hat to him, not a fedora. Well, Mike must be like part goldfish because at every single 20 second interval, his pack would go off every time. When it was pointed out to him, he'd say something along the lines of, hey, whoops, sorry, and he'd shimmy his pudgy frame around just a little bit. He would then proceed to immediately forget everything that he had just learned and bathe us again in the sweet chimes of that lovely tune. Is he really that tired that he can't just shift his weight a little bit back and forth every 20 seconds? Come on now. After the first few minutes, Mike just stopped apologizing for it. Instead, complaining about how stupid this alarm is. <laughs> it's just annoying. And, and just call for help on the radio if you need help. I'm sick of this noise. Bro, Mike is going to get lost inside a burning building and that's going to be it. Wrapped. <laughs> Maybe it's for the best, honestly. I got into a rhythm where my spidey senses would tingle, and at the 19 second mark, I'd reach over and jostle him a little bit to reset the interval. It was a hard line to walk, rocking this oversized baby while trying to listen to the captain, but I managed. Honestly, OP, you've already gone above and beyond for this dude. He deserves none of this. The SCBA packs also have an alarm for when you're low on oxygen, which Mike kindly demonstrated for us. He must have really been sucking that air after a wrestling match because the tanks are rated for 45 minutes. I don't think it was even half an hour before his pack started sounding like a church bell had snorted crystallized Red Bull. Why are you breathing so hard, friend? Maybe his lungs are just really gigantic. After getting some hands-on time with our gear and learning the basics, the captain dismissed us, giving three important statements. The time to meet tomorrow, that we'd be doing PT from here on out, and that Mike had better drop that patchy prepubescent fuzz from his face. At that last command, Mike leaned in and whispered, <laughs> I like a bald too. Ew, what? No. Don't talk to me like I'm your friend. <laughs> uh, that's good cringe. Thus ended the first day of Fire Academy, and Mike provided us with our first team building exercise. We showed up bright and early the next morning for some good old fashioned physical training. I knew there were gonna be fireworks when I saw Mike. He must have thought the captain was bluffing because he showed up to PT in his cowboy boots and he was still rocking his peach fuzz neck beard. Oh my God. Did... <laughs> uh, there's just no helping him. At a certain point, you just gotta check out. OP, I would advise you to stand far away from this human dumpster fire. I know it's good for the firefighting training and whatnot, but eventually there is going to be an explosion, uh, probably triggered by the captain, and it is going to take everybody down with him. I mean, yeah, it could also be his goldfish memory, but that's not really a good excuse. You're, you're supposed to be out here getting ready to save people's lives in the middle of a fire. <laughs> and he wears cowboy boots to PT. Great. Great. Awesome. <laughs> Rather than exploding in fury, the captain's face split into a wide smile of genuine excitement. Oh, that might be even worse. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you who have been through anything like boot camp know that it gets supremely terrifying when the man in charge gets filled with warm, fuzzy glee. Yeah, that's how I know. This isn't gonna be good. <laughs> that smile should have frozen Mike's very soul. But unfortunately, our hero's bulb just burned a bit too dim and he returned a dopey smile of his own. The captain introduced us all to Dollar Shave Club, and its newest member, Mike, 
Which brings us to our sponsor. Not a sponsor, sorry. <laughs> we learned of a long and storied tradition of picking the cheapest razor possible from the dollar store right down the road from the fire station. And the poor fools who show up with too much hair on their face get to use those razors out in the parking lot. Oh, dry shaving with a cheap razor? Good luck, bro. <laughs> He's gonna be like, why does my face hurt? Why do I have razor burn all over? Oh, goldfish memory strikes again. Mike sputtered indignantly as he was handed his razor. I know it's called a dollar store, but there's no way that thing cost an entire dollar. <laughs> if that razor was a weapon in an RPG, it would deal blunt damage. <laughs> uh... I'm loving the RPG tie-ins into this stuff. You're a master, OP. He probably would have been better off using just a sharp, pointy rock that he picked up off the ground. Try as he might, Mike didn't have quite enough charisma to pass the persuasion check, and the captain wasn't budging. Uh, do I have to do it dry? No water or, or shaving cream? <laughs> Wrong question, Mike. The captain pulled the booster line off the brush truck and handed it to him, so at least he didn't blast Mike's face with it in cold blood. He's a stronger man than I am to resist such a temptation. I mean, that might be even colder if you really think about it. Here's a fire hose. Blast yourself in the face with it, Mike. <laughs> uh, what the hell do I do with this? Yes, for water. There you go. <laughs> God damn. Uh, this is hilarious. I hope he does it, honestly. Go ahead, do it. The booster line is basically a more rugged and slightly larger garden hose. So it's not like he was about to get wrecked by the full force destruction of an attack line, but yeah, still not fun. Especially since it was the heart of winter up in a mountain range. And that's about the point you say, Never mind, I'm going in dry. That's what she said! <laughs> uh, now he's got me doing it. Everyone did their best to keep a straight face and show respect for our suffering comrade as Mike blubbered and whined and cursed. I honestly don't know why he didn't just wash the razor off and kept insisting on spraying his entire face, but who am I to judge a man's shaving ritual? Yes! Yes! <laughs> it was unexpectedly the captain himself who broke our stiff silence. After a bit, Mike just couldn't take the razor burns combined with the freezing cold water blasts, dropping the hose and crying out, No more! Not on my face, man! In a cold and steady tone, the captain locked eyes with Mike, stating, that's what she said. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, got him, coach. <laughs> uh, God, I love that. Throw his words back in his face. Oh, so good when it hits your lips. After that, we had a complete free-for-all, telling Mike about spots that he was missing, and cheers would erupt from the crowd whenever he turned the hose back on to wash his slowly balding face. <laughs> this is just a disaster. Uh, those razor burns were awful. Poor Mike looked like a butchered pig, but it's a bit hard to feel pity for a goober that really brought this on himself. I mean, I love laughing at it. I love seeing it happen, but... What if we find out, like Kevin in a big rig, that he has brain damage or something like that? Then I'll feel really bad. He hasn't been, like, too actively malicious, at least not yet, I guess. But yeah, you reap him what you sow, 100%. I just hope that this teaches him a lesson in some form or fashion. It's not like being clean-shaven is just an arbitrary standard to look professional. It's so that our SCBA face pieces have a proper seal. Oh, that's probably why he ran out of oxygen so quick, right? With an improper seal caused by a beard, you will drain the oxygen from your tank, and also your face will roast in the heat. 
Oh, and do I even need to tell you about how Mike's PT went in cowboy boots? Well, he's gonna be hurting from top to bottom after a day like this. <laughs> and the question is, did he learn anything from it? Ugh, I guess we'll see. The dude clumped around behind us during sprints, lost his balance doing bodyweight squats, and slipped after a handful of push-ups, all the while whining, You're going too fast, you tryhards! And, what the hell are you, a woman? How are you so flexible? <laughs> what a dunk to try and make. Okay, there's like the official massage. I don't feel bad for Mike anymore. Good. Suffer. Like I said, <laughs> you brought all this on yourself. After the light PT, we had a quiz on the introductory things that we learned the day before. Yeah, how do you think that one went? <laughs> Since Mike had been busy making hilarious jokes and using his phone when he thought the captain wasn't looking, he bombed the quiz. Instead of learning from his mistakes, Mike started complaining that the captain didn't cover any of the material that showed up in the questions. Then how did the veteran volunteer firefighter fail while everybody else seems to have passed, right? I think you just weren't paying attention, Mike. I think your goldfish memory has done you a disservice, Mike. And those first two days perfectly encapsulated the dance with Mike that would go on for the following months. He would brag about already being a seasoned firefighter and then embarrass himself completely during any practical skills segment. Lag behind in PT, put in the bare minimum effort, then bomb the written tests and say, eh, these are stupid anyway. I don't need book smarts. It's not kick. I'm an ace on the physical side of the job. <laughs> Do you not see yourself at PT? Is this the only way that your ego can preserve itself? Oh my God. <laughs> okay, Mike. I didn't know many aces that snatch up the chainsaw to show you ladies how it's done and then proceed to flood it so terribly that they have to bring it to the captain in shame, letting him fix it. <laughs> and for someone with intimate knowledge of firefighting, he was also pretty terrible at tying knots. I remember multiple nights that we were told nobody was dismissed until Mike could properly tie his stupid, stupid knot. I mean, tying knots does suck. I used to do it in the Navy, and I was also pretty terrible at it, but at least I did learn eventually. I probably don't remember a decade down the road, but um, at one point in my life, I could do it. I just need you to do it tonight, Mike, so I can go home. Please. The first time that the captain was demonstrating the basic knots that we'd need to know, Mike boldly raised his hand and without a hint of shame asked, uh, can we use these in the bedroom? Ew. <laughs> I guess. Shut up. Sit down. His innocent query was met with a chorus of boos, telling Mike that we most certainly did not need to know about what he did behind closed door. Yeah, you could tie down whatever inflatable partner you would like, Mike, okay? <laughs> Go ahead. He's just the worst. How is he so consistently the worst? <laughs> what do you think? If you can remember the knot for long enough to use it, then go ahead and use it. But somehow I have my doubts that you'll, you'll do it properly, especially when all the blood is flowing through the little head, right? <laughs> God. Everyone started to take notice of Mike's habit to skirt by with as little as he could get away with. If we were going into a window on a second floor, Mike would bravely hold the ladder at the bottom. If we were searching a room, he'd be the one standing outside the door to call us back. If we were busting a door open, he would stand off to the side and hold the tools whenever we'd call for them. If the captain asked for something, even something simple like, Hey, can someone grab that Halligan bar that was left outside? Mike would look around and wait for someone else to go do it. I didn't even think anything of it at first because supporting your team really is every bit as important as being the one in the action, but the longer it went on, the more my mood soured towards it. Okay, 
in Mike's defense, he is a volunteer firefighter. Maybe they only ask him to do this job. But now that you're like actively full-time firefighting, maybe learn how to go in a second story window or clear a room or whatever they're asking you to do. I think I'd start getting pretty salty about this as well. I'm trying to defend Mike at least a little bit, even after all he's put me through, but I don't know, man. He just really does not seem to want to excel in any capacity. At his best, Mike was inoffensive, mildly useful as a support role, but at his worst, he was a complete liability to the team. It was our first time doing drills with the hose, swapping lines and then firing off a short burst of water to make sure everything was working smoothly. When it got to Mike's turn, he lazily walked around, swapping the hose at his own gentle pace. <laughs> he messed around with the nozzle a bit and got it working and then tossed it to the ground. <laughs> When it hit the ground, I noticed Mike pause, bending down, and cautiously picking it back up to inspect it again. It evidently met Mike's quality control because he dropped it back down again and fled to the safety of the back of the class. He just broke the hose, didn't he? <laughs> when it was the next guy's turn and he went to turn the water on, the hose exploded! Oh my god. Launching the nozzle a good 20 feet and going haywire as the hose blasted around the parking lot. It didn't take long to wrangle the hose and shut the water off from the source, but it did leave us dripping wet in the freezing winds of a wintertop mountain. Mike had broken the nozzle and just not bothered to tell anyone. Bro, we all saw you do it. <laughs> you were the one that had gone just before. At least take some responsibility for your actions. Oh, you're killing me. <laughs> the captain called for Mike asking, Did you break my goddamn hose? But Mike was nowhere to be found. <laughs> uh, he ran, dude. Maybe we're never going to see Mike again. Although the story is not even close to over. So, okay. After a brief search, he was located in the bathrooms. <laughs> it's like a little boy. Just go run and hide in the bathroom when something goes wrong. Come on. Mike knew exactly what he had done and sought sanctuary. I didn't care one bit that he busted a nozzle, okay? Accidents happen and I've broken things around the fire station. But Mike, how dare you, sir? How dare you be content to let the team bear the consequences of your actions and run away instead of saying, hey, sorry, I think I messed something up. Very simple. How, how terrible do you think the punishment is going to be? OP has it 100% correct. This guy is a liability. Imagine that happening like during the actual action. Those firefighter hose nozzles, they ain't tiny. Launching that thing 20 feet, that could kill somebody. Hits him in the head, boom. Now you're going to jail for manslaughter. Not to mention the fact that it, it sets the whole firefighting effort back a few minutes. And in a situation like that, minutes are crucial. You know what? Mike needs to get sacked. He obviously doesn't want to be here. He got pressured by somebody or, you know, maybe the salary was just too good for him to pass up. But he's lazy. He, he's a piece of trash. He doesn't belong here. Much like Kevin in a big rig, you gotta go. You gotta go. Find something that you're more suited for. Uh, firefighting gear does not dry out quickly. My gloves were damp for four days. I don't know why he was so timid about the nozzle when he's so bold and stubborn in his defiance in other areas. Mike joined the prestigious Dollar Shave Club a grand total of three times which puts him at the top of the leaderboard. Oh my god, it. <laughs> uh, he just has a problem with authority, I'm pretty sure. And again, it's not gonna work. You don't belong on the team. If for some reason we didn't meet for more than three days, Mike would show up defiantly sporting his neck beard like a lone knight waving the banner of a long defeated kingdom. He truly is the pride of his people, 
I don't know any other beard that would go through such pain and humiliation in order to preserve their culture. <laughs> uh, I love the way you phrased that, honestly. Beautiful. The second occurrence of the Dollar Shave Club is in the morning after we did some special PT. We got completely suited up and went on air and were told to just do laps until our tank ran out. We started on our laps as Mike suffered and each pass around the parking lot, we saw a continuous deterioration of Mike's mental state. The dehumanization of losing his patchy fuzz, the freezing water, the dubious piece of metal, all of it slowly shaved away at his soul. <laughs> at a certain point, don't you think you just learned the lesson? Okay, I have to shave for this job. There's some part of him that enjoys the attention, I'm sure of it. The original purpose of this exercise was to simply get a feel for how long we could last in an active environment and get a baseline for how close we match the 45 minutes of air that the tanks are rated for. The idea was for us to stop as soon as the low air alarm sung its tune. However, we're stupid cavemen and we turned it into a competition. <laughs> <laughs> the captain was never one to squash our fighting spirit and modified the parameters, saying we could ride out the tanks for as long as we felt comfortable. Oh boy. <laughs> I don't need air to run laps. I'm gonna be the strongest one of all. You know what? I think I'm good. I'm comfortable with last place. I, I don't think I need to suffocate myself. <laughs> It was a dangerous game to play, but if playing chicken with your air supply meant that you could keep going longer than the others, then it was game on! <laughs> I got really lucky that this competition played into my strong suits. Since I practice boxing, I'm really good at controlling my breathing, and I run five miles most days. God damn. I absolutely dreaded the miles when I first started, but every day at Fire Academy, I was so grateful that my coach made me start running like that. I ended up being the last man standing and stopped the clock at over an hour. Sorry for bragging. Please don't think I'm a tool. I'm just so proud that I won our dumb little competition. And you are allowed to brag. It fits into the story. If you're doing this as a complete non sequitur, I probably would dunk on you. But I like you, OP. You throwing RPG stuff into a firefighting story, you've given us a very dumb beard and your, your running story fits in. I do come after some OPs, I, I'm completely aware of that, but you, yeah, you get a pass on this one. You did it correctly. But anyways, back to Mike. When Mike wrapped up the shave of shame, he also got to gear up and do his laps. There is no escape. <laughs> you would think that Mike would easily last the longest because of how much later he started, but he was among the first people whose low air alarm started ringing. <laughs> Either that guy has four lungs or he is really out of shape. He immediately called it quits without pushing any boundaries. Oh, Mike, you're just a mess. I mean, I probably would be a mess as well, but I'm also not jumping up to become a firefighter. All right, I'm comfortable doing my thing on YouTube. I help people out mentally, I'll comfort them on their loneliest days, but there ain't no way I'm diving into a burning building. Thank you so much. <laughs> Mike just plunked down on the pavement right where he was standing, stripping gear off like someone poured sand down his back. This was a very bad habit of his that personally drove me bonkers. We'd be halfway through a drill or a training exercise and Mike would just decide he was too hot or things were getting too difficult, and he would start dropping layers. Excuse me, guy, what's the plan inside of an actual fire? <laughs> you gonna call a timeout from the fire and just rip your jacket off? Your hammies are gonna roast, my dude. No, the, the fire's very understanding, come on. It'll hang back for a couple minutes, let him catch his breath. <laughs> Uh, he definitely can't handle the heat. It's time to get out of the kitchen, Mike. I can't really get on him too hard for stopping with the alarm, however. Running out of air is definitely in the list of the top 10 worst things to run out of. Yeah, I'd say it's, it's number one. <laughs> Your mask 
sucks to your face like a roided octopus, and you can't breathe at all. Like a plastic bag is over your face. I mean, it is just a plastic shell. Not a good situation to be in, as I freely admitted. Yeah, I would tap out too. With Mike's third introduction into the Dollar Shave Club, the captain started adding to the punishment. No longer was he just shaving, he was doing push-ups afterwards. Yeah, third time's the charm. He's obviously not learning. <laughs> Mike was only asked to do 25, but goodness gracious, did he whine about such a Herculean feat. You'd think he was asked to do 500. There's no way Mike was doing these alone, so I got down with another member of our class, and the three of us did them together. Oh, OP, you're trying to motivate the unmotivatable. But again, tip of the hat, you are definitely a solid member of this team, okay? I wouldn't have made it through boot camp without motivators like you. But I don't think that Mike, I, I, it's just impossible. I hope you're doing these push-ups mostly for yourself. The captain finally told Mike, If you show up one more time with that stupid beard, you're cut. You failed Academy once at your home department. You really want to do it here again? Over some facial hair? Oh, the plot thickens. <laughs> Mike has been rejected before. I wonder why. Mike gave in and was squared away with shaving after that, but not before saying, Man, just chill. Come on, dude. Just because you have no game doesn't mean you have to kill mine. <laughs> Don't want a baby face little beta male. <laughs> oh, that's what it is, Mike? That's what gets you all the ladies? It's, it's the patchy neck beard? <laughs> uh, you're playing yourself at this point. Come on now. And this is the point when I learned that this was Mike's second time up at bat. This was his redemption run! And he's failing it miserably. <laughs> Anyone else with a little fire in their belly would try to aim for the top of the class. But Mike was still just bumbling around in the background, hoping no one would notice him and actually ask him to, you know, do something. It's where the first seed of suspicion was planted. That perhaps Mike only wanted this for the clout and the status that he would feel entitled to from becoming a firefighter. Yeah, I think you 100% nailed that one down, OP. I still treated Mike with the same respect that I gave everyone else in the class, because whatever his motives were, we were all in this together. He hadn't been outright hostile towards anyone, and his, that's what she said, jokes had become our honorary motto and battle cry. Oh, please don't encourage him. <laughs> really, it's the captain that started this. He was just making fun of Mike, throwing his words back in his face, and everybody's like, well, the captain does it. Okay, I guess we're all gonna start doing it. And Mike probably feels like a really big man because of that. You shouldn't, though. The deeper we got into training, the more Mike was determined to chip away at the mutual respect that we all shared. During a search and rescue drill, they closed up all the doors to the engine bay and pumped it full of smoke to simulate a burning building. You really don't appreciate just how much smoke obscures your vision until you're in there and you can't even see your own hand as you wave it in front of your face. Now, I have never been in a situation like that, but it sounds interesting. Kind of reminds me of when they tear gassed us in the Navy. But that wasn't like super thick smoke. That was just kind of, you know, your own eyes watering up so you can't see. We took turns in teams of two, busting open the metal door prop to make entry and proceeding to search the house. From the outside, I could hear Mike squealing that, eh, That's way too much smoke, dude. I've been to real fires before. <laughs> that's unrealistic BS. <laughs> oh, Mike. Oh, Mike. <laughs> uh, just stop, okay? Let's play pretend for just a moment. I mean, he's already way ahead on the playing pretend. Pretending he's a real firefighter. But yeah, shouldn't more smoke make you a better firefighter? How about that? Mike also took issue with the fact that we had to get low on our hands and knees when inside, saying, um, I'm not an animal, bro. 
Why can't I walk like a man? Men don't demean themselves like this. Imagine masculinity so fragile that you can't crawl on your hands and knees. <laughs> you can't put your hands on the floor for just a minute, even to save your own life. There's really just no defending this. <laughs> uh, come on, bro. Why can't I walk like a man? Okay, go ahead. Die like a man. <laughs> Whatever you want to do. Well, Mike, it's because heat rises. If you stand up, your face will be in the thousand degree temperature zone and it's hot. If you've been paying attention, you can easily guess Mike's reply. <laughs> it's hot. That's what she said <laughs> when she saw me, of course. Oh, God. <laughs> it's painful. Yeah, Mike. We really went a long way for that one, and it was totally worth it. Oh, yes. Thank you for clarifying that, Mike. <laughs> None of this was my real issue, though. Whatever team Mike was on would always miss one, sometimes two, of the dummies. This is because Mike would check a room in the sloppiest, laziest way possible, and then tell his partner, uh, Yeah, it was all clear. You're just a mess. Fire him! People are going to die! Oh my god, you think you're going to be able to fix this? Please, God, tell me that this story doesn't end with him becoming a firefighter. It, it can't. It can't possibly go that way, can it? <sighs> I I'm cool with a lot of things. And even his dumb jokes were winning us all over. But I am definitely not cool with leaving victims behind in a burning building just because you're lazy. I try my best to be more about building people up instead of tearing them down. Maybe that's hypocritical with what I've been writing about Mike so far. That's because when I was paired with Mike, I tried to gently bring it up with him by reminding him of the way that we were taught to search a room and that maybe he should try that method this time around. I'm all for building people up, but some people do need the tough love, OP. I think you have struck a fine balance. You've only written two stories, but I'm a fan, 100%. Rather than taking the olive branch and building a bromance together, he snapped my poor branch in half and said, You're not my mom, a-hole! Why you being such a try-hard anyway? It's just training! <laughs> I bet you'll bug out the second you see real flames. Ugh, it's just training. Do you understand why we go through training, Mike? <laughs> Are you kidding? Uh, just, just fine. Whatever, Mike. I'll search all the rooms myself and let you stand outside with your dong in your hand if it'll even reach your palm. Ooh, snap. Now OP's bringing the heat. And I love that in a firefighting story. It's topical. <laughs> I fully understand that it was just training and those weren't real people in there. But I am a firm believer in the quote by Marcus Luttrell, you play like you practice and you practice how you play. 100%. Why do you think we're practicing this? Why do you think we do things in the way that we do? I'm going to quote my RDC from boot camp and say all of these regulations are written in blood. Do you understand that? I couldn't stand by and watch this. I don't care how many cutesy little jokes he makes. He's not cut out to be a fireman. OP continues, when it is real people, you aren't gonna be ready to get them out because you didn't actually prepare for it. When it hits the fan, you go back into the instincts and habits that you drilled into yourself. If your habit is just to give a minimum effort sweep of a room, well, that's what you're gonna do in a real scenario. 100% he's be like, it's hot. <laughs> I looked inside the room, isn't that enough? No, bro, go make sure there's no people hidden under debris. You know what I'm saying? Repeat it until you don't even have to think about it and just react. That's how you get good at anything. And as always, just minimum effort. Just, oh, God, where's your humanity? 
All right, soapbox mode over. I'll now share a few funny tales of Mike getting wedged in some very great predicaments. One day, as we made our merry way into class, the captain was standing beside what could only be described as a torture device from one of the Saw movies. It was a box made of plywood, probably six feet long, with hundreds of stripped wires and paracord and all kinds of insidious snares stapled from wall to wall. The inside of it had maybe two square inches of space that was clear of any nonsense. You want to play a game? <laughs> it's not so bad, right? I mean, I'm a big boy, but I think I could make it through there. Just pretend that you're a cat. <laughs> the captain informed us that this box was lovingly named Mike's Attic. <laughs> oh my God. Did Mike struggle through his own attic? This exercise had two purposes. Well, three if you count the captain's glee at torturing us. It was to teach us how to crawl through confined spaces while fully geared up and also to work on communication skills. While one firefighter cursed their way through Mike's attic, his partner would give him instructions from the outside in an effort to keep the guy from getting tangled beyond all hope. Hell yeah, teamsies! Mike, however, did not handle either end of these instructions very well. He had barely poked his head in when the ferocious war cries started emanating from behind his face mask. Hey, screw this, dude! What the hell? If someone's attic is this messy, just let the stupid house burn. Yeah, imagine the firefighters showing up and being like, nope, too much stuff in there. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Mike, get it together! Hey, something's touching my <laughs> you <laughs> lords. <laughs> that, that's what she said. <laughs> oh, isn't he just a treat? <laughs> God, I hate him. Uh, oh, his poor partner. He would try to warn Mike that there was a wire coming up and say, duck your head over to the left. And Mike's response was to swing his head like a bull, trying to impale something on its horns. And he would get his helmet caught on five different sources. <laughs> it was like that the entire way through. There were points that I swear he was completely suspended in the air as he thrashed about doing his best Magikarp impression. <laughs> Which does say a lot about the integrity of these ropes and wires. <laughs> Even Pokemon references in here. This is beautiful, OP. I hope you'll write some more stories for us. By the grace of God, Mike finally made it through to the other end, dropping out and again flopping limply on the pavement. Mike lost a boot, his helmet, his flashlight, both gloves, and a lot of his dignity. <laughs> but he made it through. When he caught his breath and could stand up again, Mike graciously informed the captain that, uh, Holy hell, dude. I wouldn't even let a babe tie me up like that. Oh, tell me no more. <laughs> uh... Yeah, now we're all suffering right alongside you, Mike. Thanks for bringing that up. Nobody is buying that story anyways. If he had a woman in his bedroom who wasn't inflatable and she wanted to tie him up, he'd be like, yeah, of course. And then she would just tie him up and leave him there because nobody could bring themselves to be intimate with Mike. <laughs> I'm sure that you are shocked to hear that Mike was not a very useful guide during this exercise. The majority of his instructions were, um, there's a cord or something ahead of you in a wooden box that was packed with hundreds of cords. Yeah, super helpful, Mike. <laughs> I just tell him, shut up. Shut up, let me do it myself, all right? This was not the last time getting stuck like a hand in a cookie jar. If you thought Mike's attic was a devious contraption, you're gonna be floored by this one. The people in charge of fire programs really outdid themselves. I would later find out that my own father played a role in its design and construction. They took a full box trailer and demonized it. 
it was pitch black inside, and not just because of the lack of any light, they painted the inside black. It was separated into three floors, so each level was only a few feet high. The floors themselves had all kinds of twists and turns and unexpected drops or points where you had to climb up a floor to try and not get wedged between them. It sounds so fun until it's not anymore. <laughs> I would love to play in this for a little while, but then that claustrophobia is going to kick up. I'm going to be like, somebody pull me out! And then the rope's going to get caught in all the cords and nobody ever saw Red X again. <laughs> With all the gear on, it was a luxury to find a section that had even an entire inch of wiggle room. Since the captain, you know, loves us so much, <laughs> he banned all uses of flashlight so that pitch black was a permanent feature. It also had a few ropes in there that were strategically placed to specifically snag your SCBA air pack. If you're claustrophobic, your hands are probably sweaty just reading this. <laughs> uh, this is definitely a test. And we all know how Mike does on tests. The guy that Mike was partnered with for this training does have legitimate claustrophobia. Like a good team does, we were all encouraging him and telling him that we wouldn't think less of him if he couldn't make it through. Mike's encouraging words were, <laughs> Don't be such a wuss. Just follow me and I'll show you how a real man does it. Ah. Yeah, Mike is always the first to talk the talk, but he can never seem to crawl the crawl. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> My partner and I volunteered to go first. I guess we don't share enough brain cells between the two of us to tap into the instinctual dread that the others were feeling because we actually thought it looked pretty fun. I'm leaning towards that as well. And then I get inside and find out the exact opposite. <laughs> we did have a lot of fun scurrying through it like a pair of armored rats. The only part I did not enjoy was the final segment before freedom. Yeah, that's when they kick it up a notch. It was a long hallway with the light of day at the end, and it slowly got tighter as you got closer to those rays of hope. You had to back up to a point where you could somehow wrestle your pack off, get it in front of you, and push it forward with your arms outstretched as you squirmed your way through. Keep in mind that all of this while you're still on the air, and taking off a pack that has a tube attached to your face is so much more difficult than just taking a regular one off. If you could clear that and squeeze out of the final tube, you were home free. I'm going to go ahead and place the bet that Mike is never going to make it through. <laughs> Seeing us go first did not help Mike's partner. He looked even more pale than when we entered. And Mike was telling him, Come on, man. <laughs> Don't you like tight things? <laughs> You're a man, aren't you? <laughs> oh, my God. He's so insufferable. How are people actually getting behind him? Being like, oh, I don't know. I kind of like his jokes. It's only been brought up like five, six times in this post, and I'm already like, okay, roll my eyes, whatever. <laughs> I don't actually have any eyes, but you, you get my meaning. Fortunately for Mike, his partner was actually the true man that Mike thought of himself as. He set his jaw in determination and solemnly entered his worst nightmare made reality. Inside the belly of that beast, Mike decided that his partner was going too slow, and he forged on ahead, leaving his partner behind with no care or remorse. Exactly as we would expect, I guess. Now, leaving your partner is a cardinal sin in the firefighting world, and it's even more obscene considering how his partner felt about tight spaces. I'll spare you the rant and just let you mentally flog Mike on your own this time. I mean, it's been already pretty established what sort of person he is. Irredeemable is the sort of person. I, I don't want to interact with him ever, ever. Luckily, there were escape hatches built in for when an immediate exit from the maze was necessary. Mike's partner made it halfway through before his low air alarm went off, and it just became too overwhelming for him. I don't blame him one bit for throwing in the towel at that point. Alone, 
barely fitting inside a pitch black tunnel that's part of a much larger maze, while an alarm screams at you that you're about to run out of oxygen? Yeah, even for someone not claustrophobic, that is a lot to handle. In a beautiful twist of fate, with his partner already gone through an escape hatch, Mike was now the one left alone and afraid inside of the maze. Loser! <laughs> his woeful cries rang out from the abyss as he slowly crawled through the trailer. We could hear him getting closer to the exit when all of a sudden, a mighty guttural shook the trailer, followed by his helmet shooting out from the tunnel. Mike must be a hell of a bowler from the way it rocketed forth into the light of day. Mike was simply following his standard operating procedures. When things get difficult, just say, screw it, only wusses take this seriously, and abandon all integrity of this training exercise. Honestly, you love to see him suffer. Good, I'm glad you didn't make it out. <laughs> I shouldn't feel that, but you weren't cut out from the very beginning. As a string of disembodied curses floated out from the void, I realized that it had finally backfired on him. In his haste to rip his mask and jacket off, he had completely tangled himself up in a mess of sleeves and straps and air pack tubes. I can only imagine the discomfort of trying to wriggle your way through an extremely tight tunnel while your own gear tries to strangle you. <laughs> that gear knows what it's doing, okay? It's saving us all. Yeah, this is, it is stupid. It is worthless. This goddamn pack. Call it luck. Call it God's mercy. Call it fate. He was somehow able to get his pack in front of him. We heard an ominous bong that jostled the walls with an ah right on its heels. <laughs> I think he tried to launch it out the same way that he did his helmet, but silly Mike forgot that he was still very much tangled with the pack. <laughs> uh, you deserve it all. I can't even feel bad for you. This triggered some sage advice from the captain of, Don't you throw my pack out of that hole! You just shimmy, like everyone else. Hearing the word hole... <laughs> God damn it. Mike gave a confused and disheartened, hey, That's what she said! <laughs> uh, I hate it. He gave up on a second attempt at launching the pack and just wormed his way forward like a hamstrung caterpillar. It felt like an eternity for him to complete that final stretch. Make a few inches of progress, stop to catch his goddamn breath and waste said rest period throwing hissy fits about his current predicament. Yeah, but he's too stupid to quit. He's like, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. Even if I have to sit in here for an hour, you all are going to wait for me. The shiny top of his air canister eventually poked its round head from the mouth of the tiny tunnel, and some souls kinder than I am took mercy and threw Mike some bones. See, OP was trying to help at first. Now he's just checked out. He's like, I know what this dude is. You can't help the helpless, all right? The helpless got to help themselves before I go out there and put in the effort. That's just how it be. They got a grasp on just how much damage his flailing strip fest had done and freed him from his bonds. With the pack untangled, they pulled it out the rest of the way for him, but the battle was still only half over. The captain tried to warn him, Arms out first, Mike. It's the only way to fit. These kind words, meant to help, were met with shrieks of, Yeah, no crap! I'm not stupid. I'd have my arms forward if I could, but this stupid fat dumb jacket has me like a pair of your mom's handcuffs. He's really on that, isn't he? He's like, this is the way that normal active people talk, isn't it? No, Mike. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> the captain kicked the wall of the tunnel, which produced another shrill shriek. That's right, you don't talk about my mama! <laughs> His kick had apparently knocked something loose because Mike's arms were magically in front of him now. The whole class erupted in cheers as he poked his head out. They were yelling, PUSH! PUSH! in unison as his shoulders and then his torso appeared. 
His gut was the biggest hurdle, comically filling the entire diameter of the tunnel as he grunted and squealed. I can't believe people are still giving this dude any encouragement. Uh, I'm just at a loss for words after a certain point. I like to think that us yelling push gave Mike the extra strength that he needed because with one last mighty shove, he slumped to the ground. Literal mic drop. <laughs> As Mike lay there gasping for air, we all congratulated the captain on the beautiful baby boy he just had. Yeah, I'm gonna drown that one in the bathtub. <laughs> I'm good on all of this. A mini chapter on Mike is his social media presence. The dude absolutely loves Snapchat. Oh, there's your problem. How old are you still on Snapchat? For shame. <laughs> and if you add him, he will send you no less than 11 streaks a day with constant melodramatic posts on his story. Many firefighters in the local departments have added him, tried to keep up for a week, and then gave up and dropped him from their friends list. I still have him added because of the enjoyment that I get from his posts, and really, that seems to outweigh everything else. Wow, you must get a lot of enjoyment from these posts. <laughs> Here are uh, some of my favorites. I can't believe I lowered my standards that far, just for someone like you. <laughs> really do me nothing. <laughs> uh, yeah, just, just say you're out here banging the uggos, Mike. It's all right. You just have to own it after a certain point. Sometimes a man just needs a quiet place to sit and think about life. Background of the snap is a TV with Fortnite being played. <laughs> uh, not even outside or anything. Come on now. Chasing the bag, <laughs> the only thing left in my life worth chasing. This one seems to be his favorite quote, as he posts it at least once a week. Chasing the bag? Surely he doesn't mean chasing the bag like, like gainful employment, right? <laughs> He's chasing around like a, a ball bag or something like that? <laughs> uh, there's no way that this guy is going to stay employed for an extended period of time. Nevertheless, employ himself for an extended period of time. He's barely even functional within society. You're just terrible. Eh, when your shuffle hits you with a depression track, you just sit and think about everything you could have done better. I could change. If you're reading this, you know who you are, baby girl. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Uh, no, that, that woman should run and, and stay run away. All because he hit a, a depression track on shuffle. Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, how old is he? Too damn old to be doing stuff like this. He like a 15-year-old a, a trapped in a 20-something-year-old man's body. My personal favorite has got to be, <laughs> damn, really do a lot to lower a man's self of steam. That is not an error from me. That's how he thought you said, self-esteem. There you go, a little bit of that old bone apple tea mixed in. <laughs> man, self of steam. That's right, he's hollow man. I really don't think that women need to help you in lowering your self-esteem, Mike. You, you seem to do that yourself. Even though everybody out here trying to build you back up for some reason, you just constantly continue to fail. Your ego can't protect you 100%. That much I know. That's why you're out here Snapchatting, trying to get some sort of attention. Really, that's, that's what all this is, I think. He thirsts for attention more than anything else, and everybody in that fire department gave it to him. Ugh, come on! The runner-up favorite goes to, uh, From here on out, screw these hoes! <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, whatever. He's on his smegma male grind set, I guess. I'm still undecided if this meant he was renouncing women, or if he had turned a new leaf, and was henceforth going to be having actual physical relations with women. I'm pretty sure he's renouncing them because paired with the get this bag thing, 
Like I said, Sigma male grind set. We've seen it a hundred times before. Nobody's falling for it, though, okay? He's just still pathetic at the end of the day. And nobody can save him from himself. All you can really do is sit back, watch the dumpster fire. As the months went on, winter gave way to spring, and class was rapidly reaching its conclusion. Not even a fire academy is immune from the timeless end-of-school tradition, playing games of Kahoot! <laughs> Some necessary exposition for this event is that we all have four-digit ID numbers assigned to us, which are primarily used over the radio. You'll say things like, Firefighter 3215 is en route, Firefighter 1298 and 2318 are making entry on the first floor, Let's just say Mike's number was 6969 to keep it anonymous. I mean, he probably would actually switch it to that if he was allowed to. Well, Mike was extremely proud of his number and he used it for everything, including his Kahoot name. So I decided to have a little fun. You mean he actually graduated from the academy? I'm, I'm so depressed. I am so depressed. <laughs> How did this happen? How did it all come to this? He was actually assigned a number and told to go rescue people? Please tell me this is just a participation trophy. <laughs> I can't, man. This don't make any sense. So Mike signed into the game using 6969 for his username. I used his number for my username too, but I added a bit of spice to it. My username was the Alpha 6969. <laughs> and Mike went ballistic. Uh, what? The Alpha? Screw whoever that is. I'm the Alpha one. How, how do I change my name? Take my number off. You don't deserve it. <laughs> uh, you seem a little triggered. Why not go ahead and take a deep breath? His tirade did not have the effect that he thought it would, and there ended up being six other versions of usernames with Mike's number. Some were Big Dog, and others were Ace, and each one drove Mike more and more feral. <laughs> the captain eventually had to tell Mike to sit down and shut up. You want to be the alpha, then beat the others with your Kahoot score. This satiated Mike and set his determination firmly in place. Unfortunately, all the determination in the world is not enough to make up for months of thinking that textbook knowledge was for wussies, and the true Mike never made it to the leaderboard. It was just a short week after this incident that our final exam took place. Oh good, he's not in yet. Oh, thank God. The test is split into two segments, making for a really long day. First is a written exam, followed by a practical test where a random selection of five skills is chosen. You could land on something as simple as swapping out a busted section of hose, or you could do an entire search of a building for victims. It was drilled into us from day one that firefighting is a team affair, and as such, we did these skill assessments in teams of two. Oh boy, lucky me. My partner was Mike. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, not good. Not good. As we finished the written exam and the skills test was being prepared, I told Mike that I had his back, but he should try and stand out a bit to make a good impression on the proctors. He still did his fair share of sitting back, holding the ladder for me, letting me do most of the talking when describing each part of our SCBA packs, but I will give credit to Mike. He did actually try, and we made it through together. Oh no, I'm horrified. <laughs> As the testing ended, we all met for a celebratory meal that marked the end of class and the end of our time together. I'm honestly not sure if Mike passed his tests or not, because he didn't show up to our graduation party a few weeks later. Good. I'm, I hope the captain took him aside and like, look, I understand you passed the test, but it wasn't on your merit. Your partner dragged you through it. When I texted him asking if everything was okay, he gave some lukewarm reply about, hey, it being lame anyways. Oh, 
There is a God. <laughs> he didn't let it happen. Oh, I'm so grateful. I thought it was going to go a, a really terrible way. Despite some rocky moments, I do hope that he did pass and get his certification. Well, that makes one of us. <laughs> the last I saw of him, he was pouting next to a fire engine, sourly watching as we all got to make entry into the building while he was told to stand over there, out of the way. I hope you enjoyed hearing my story about Mike, and remember to put your best effort into whatever you choose to pursue. I still see him occasionally since he volunteers for a neighboring department. If there's interest in a sequel, Mike has definitely given me enough material since the end of class to write one, and I can throw in some fun stories from Academy that weren't included in this post. Oh, he, he, he didn't make it. <laughs> I'm super looking forward to a sequel, especially now that I know his fate is not with uh, the actual firefighters. You can volunteer, that's fine. Go hold the ladder, but we're not paying you to do whatever the hell it is that you're trying to do. Little did you know, Mike is actually an acronym. It stands for might instantly kill everyone. <laughs> so it's just such a good thing. I do think that the captain took him aside and was just like, look, you're not cut out. I understand this was your redemption. It's really what you want, but you haven't done enough to make yourself stand out. And I don't feel like you actually deserve this. So go back to volunteering. He really thought that would help him to, like, pick up women or something. Like, his motivations are completely out of whack. He's just a really, really weird dude. And I'm glad, although he got raised up as sort of an ironic mascot for the class, that they decided not to let him in at the end of the day. I am breathing the biggest sigh of relief. If my house was on fire, please don't send Mike in after me, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna die in there, I'm pretty sure. Mike's May Day! This will be uh, part number two for those that are keeping track. I guess I gotta make a playlist for this now because uh, I wasn't sure if it was gonna be a one-parter or, or what's going on. And apparently, we got our OP in the Twitch chat right now. He said that he's pushing out part number three. So yes, we will get some continuing sagas of Mike. I thought it was just a one-off, but I can, I can say that I'm glad that it's not, honestly. So, hello, everyone! Hello to you, that play kid, aka Acceptable Tackle 79. God, those Reddit usernames are really just the worst. <laughs> I'm here to deliver this uh, possibly anticipated and hopefully not disappointing sequel to Mike. It's very humbling and feels special to have my stories read on the channel. I feel like I just kind of ramble, but I'm glad Red X can use it to give some people entertainment. Honestly, people love the rambling. I don't know what goes on, okay? That's basically all I do, too. I get up here and make words, and people are like, Yay, make more words! I'm like, okay, cool, you liking that? <laughs> and I really do enjoy this saga. It's, it's one of the better written ones that we have. I often hesitate to take on new authors because, yeah, it's a little bit scary sometimes. You never know what you're gonna get, but this one turned out well. So to clarify a few things from part one, Mike was not given the boot three days in because of the captain's policy. If you decided that firefighting wasn't for you after all, you were free to leave and there was no shame involved, but he was not going to actively try and drown people out. If you were going to stick it out, he was hell bent on at least giving you the opportunity to take the final exam, and then it was on you to pass or fail. It feels really good knowing that if you aren't gonna give up, then you aren't going to be given up on. That is a really good way to look at it, honestly. I'm like totally checked out. Get Mike out of here. I don't think he's capable of saving another human life. But yeah, the captain is like, maybe we can fix him. Unfortunately, that's never the case with neckbeards. An external force is never going to fix a neckbeard. They have to find it within themselves. Sometimes an external force can apply the pressure to find it within themselves. But I digress. This policy does sometimes backfire with situations like Mike, where even though it's clear that this is not a field he's going to be successful in, he's still allowed to stay enrolled and attempt the exam. While that puts a lot of faith in the exam itself to filter candidates, the exam does do a good job of that, 
and it isn't something that you can easily slip through. I have since learned that Mike did not pass the written portion of the test and was given votes of no confidence in the practical assessment. <laughs> uh, votes of no confidence. Good God. If that doesn't just sum it up in a few words, right? Every neckbeard on the planet, I give them a vote of no confidence. I want to believe, but after 700 videos, how can I continue believing, honestly? I wouldn't fault someone for saying that it's a waste of time and resources to keep people in, regardless, instead of just booting the dead weight, but it is a situation that I sympathize with. I couldn't be a training captain because I'm too soft to tell someone that they're cut and that their dreams are dead, even when it is genuinely for the better of everyone involved, including the person that is being cut. Well, I gotta say this much, it's much better to have a very awkward five minute conversation than it is to continue on for months or even years pretending that the situation isn't what it obviously is. You know what I'm getting at? I'll pull the bandaid right off, I don't care. But then again, I could probably do with a bit more sympathy as the comments section has often pointed out. I am very quick to come at people. <laughs> So that's the reason that he was still in the academy, and the reason that he kept volunteering at his home department without being dropped like a horde of iron daggers clogging your inventory is simpler. Hey, probably you should vendor those daggers though, as an aside. <laughs> it's because we're all small departments where I am, and every set of hands is important. I've been on fires now where we've only had six people there, and it is a category five nightmare. Even bumbling hands like Mike's can be the difference maker. Well, yeah, I suppose he's good at the, the background jobs, holding the ladder and whatnot. Then you've got like an extra firefighter who actually knows what they're doing going into the building. Uh, I guess. I guess. Also, his department contains a few rather Mike-like individuals. I was at a fire when a fella from his department came on the radio from the comfort of his own home and proceeded to armchair quarterback our firefighting efforts. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> uh, uh, are you kidding me? No, you're home. You're not involved at all. Backseat gaming. <laughs> uh, but with firefighters, that's really weird. That's really weird. No wonder Mike feels so comfortable. Anyways, now on to the story. Towards the end of Academy, we had a brutal weekend of specialized training for saving downed firefighters called Mayday Training. It started off pretty somber because, as Red X himself said, this training was written in blood. We learned intimate details about firefighters who had died over the years and how we can be prepared to make sure that the next incident ends in injury, not death. Yeah, this is some serious business, you know, uh, Mike might be here to have fun, play a little bit of grab ass or whatever, but you need to put your, your, your big boy serious hat on right now, okay? As you can imagine, everyone was feeling grim when we finished the lecture and the pep talk from the trainers saying that we'd be throwing up and want to quit, didn't do much to lighten the mood. Ah, they always say that though. You're gonna be fine. <laughs> What's a little bit of puke? You're good. You get it out and it's over. Even Mike managed to hold out and wait until lunch to make some crude joke that involved cocaina. Uh, I hope you forgive me for not exactly remembering what the joke was, but just trust me that you aren't missing out. Yeah, I bet it was super hilarious. We all know Mike's level of humor is just out of this world. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to know what it was, but that's like just morbid curiosity than anything. The, the first drill of the day after our lecture was a standard firefighter drag. We learned how to make a few quick changes to the straps of your SCBA pack to lock the person in and make the drag easier. And then you had to haul your talking sack of potatoes across an open field. Making those strap adjustments required getting pretty down and dirty with the fella who was playing dead, and Mike made the hilarious joke of, hey, whoa, buy me dinner first, dude. Yeah, great. <laughs> if he was the body, or don't expect me to buy you dinner, man. I'm only into hot babes. 
if he was the one doing the drag. Oh my god, it's just like a, a pull string doll. He's got like four phrases and that's it. Does this even qualify as like a real human being? <laughs> it's just no personality whatsoever. The Boomer Joke Pull String Doll. Pick yours up at Walmart now. <laughs> Mike really embraced the spirit of the training because he left no man behind. He repeated those two jokes every single time we did a new revolution of the drill with a different partner. Oh yes, it was so hilarious the first five times. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure that nobody misses out on that gem. Ugh. As for performing the drill itself, Mike finally found a role that he could excel at. He was born to be listless dead weight. <laughs> he could go perfectly limp like he was on the receiving end of a Mike Tyson knockout punch, and he must have filled his pockets with some of those ultra-dense sci-fi metals from how much heavier he was able to make himself. I mean, dead weight it is a lot heavier than somebody that's squirming around. Did you ever try to move a dead body, OP? Don't ask me. Don't ask me anything about that, okay? I'm not at liberty to discuss it. The case is still ongoing. We're moving on. <laughs> uh, he wasn't quite there with the rescuing part, though. I can't say that Mike did his best because uh, that would be a lie. His half-hearted tugs produced minimal movement, and towards the halfway mark, he decided that uh, he was simply too tired to finish saving a fallen comrade and slumped over right there. Okay, yeah, I guess we're both just gonna burn to death together. Are you kidding me, bro? I shouldn't be surprised. I, I mean, I'm really not surprised. But where is your get up and go is all I really got to say. With terrifying ferocity and blistering speed, the two trainers materialized on either side of Mike like a random encounter that you were 50 levels too low for. They were not messing around. Everyone was startled by how quickly they switched from calm and understanding to I will pour boiling water up your nostrils if you do not start moving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like they said earlier, this is all written in blood, okay? Now is not the time to be weak. We are training, and we are training for a reason. If somehow Mike made it through that test, just imagine. Just imagine. Ain't gonna save nobody. His head whipped from side to side, wide-eyed terror on his face, as they each yelled at him to get the hell up, and that he was just sitting there letting his brother die. Their words were uh, much less polite than I want to actually write out, and I do appreciate that. So rejoice, for Mike had finally met his match. He summoned the might of a drunken sloth and started moving again, whining the whole time that he just needed a breather and a person could last a few more seconds while I recharge. Oh yeah, that's all it takes you to recharge, Mike? Uh, a few seconds. <laughs> you get that quick charge capability, Mike? I don't think you do. Keep moving. As soon as your fat self sits down, I know you're never going to get back up, so just get it done. They wanted to hear none of this, of course, and spurred him on with the ruthless whip cracks of their words. When he finally crossed the finish line, whining again because the trainers told him that he had to get the body all the way across the finish line, he said, uh, I feel lightheaded, and I have chest pains. <laughs> I'm having chest pain. Uh, are you kidding me right now? You gonna fake a heart attack on me? Go ahead, do it. <laughs> we'll call in the medics. We'll get you the hell out of here. It's a favor to everybody. The trainers gave each other looks that very clearly read as, You've got to be kidding me. But still, they got him a bottle of water. It was pretty obvious that Mike was fine. He was just gassed and knew that throwing out those buzzwords might buy him some time. Honestly, that's why you call him out on it. But then if he actually does have a heart attack, you're going to feel really guilty. Well, it turns out lazy yet arrogant underachiever was the worst possible build that Mike could have specced into for this raid. 
<laughs> You're at the bottom of every meter. What do you do? No damage, no healing, no damage taken. You're useless. You're useless. Slash kick, okay? He was now permanently on the trainers' radar, and their aggro range contained the entire world map. Yeah, and there's no way you could run far enough. Eventually, you know, they usually leash back to their starting point if you run out of range. Not these trainers, though. They got that special AI. Poor Mike. He was constantly singled out and so unjustly forced to meet the standards that everyone else was meeting. I mean, you say that sarcastically, but that literally is the way he sees it, I'm pretty sure. I helped bail him out a few times when the trainers would show some mercy and say, Fine, someone go ahead and jump in. And I saved his very soul when I offered to swap partners with him. He got paired with our class's Gentle Giant. Now, Gentle Giant is one of the nicest men that you will ever meet, and his massive six foot seven frame is completely packed with muscle. If you remember Mike's attic, he was already halfway through it by the time he got his torso in. Six foot seven. Good God. That's the guy that I want to come in and pull me out, okay? <laughs> I feel like a little baby in his arms. <laughs> now, I know, I know, bad OP for enabling Mike, but I can only watch someone suffer for so long before giving in. No matter how deserved, I will break. But as for swapping, so I'd be partnered with Gentle Giant, that one was for me, not for Mike. I'm a small guy, I'm not tall, so it was important for me to know that even in the worst situations, I could rescue someone huge like Gentle Giant. I guess that's a good way to look at it, you know? Put yourself to the test, something that Mike is nowhere near capable of doing. See, this is where we separate the men from the boys, is it not? So after a long, grueling day of being pushed to our physical limits, we were dismissed. It didn't take very long for me to learn just how much of a mistake it was to help Mike. He attached to me like a leech and decided that I was his lifeline, his one shining hope to make it through these trials alive. I got three words for you right now, OP. Scrape em off. Scrape em off. <laughs> At about 10.30 p.m., I started getting pelted with texts from Mike, asking if I was going to be there tomorrow. I told him, nah, I just got a bit too sweaty today. It was uncomfortable, so I'm just going to go play Fortnite tomorrow. To which he said, whoa, hey, want a duo? <laughs> Mike, no, I was just joking. I'm obviously going to be there tomorrow. <laughs> uh... Oh my god, bro. Come on. And honestly, if you are actually going to play Fortnite, solo is the only way to play it. Duo, uh, triples, quads, ah, forget about all that. I depend on me and me alone. <laughs> Mike sulked and told me that uh, he, he was obviously joking too. <laughs> You're probably a massive scrub that would hold me back anyways. Yeah, Mike, have you ever seen a victory royale? Even once? <laughs> Go ahead, be honest. He finally got to the point of this conversation when he very subtly asked, uh, So you gonna help me out again or what? Why? Why, do, why should I feel obligated to help you out? I did it out of pity, but now you feel like all this expectation towards it? Nah, I don't think I'm gonna do that no more. I told him I would be there for the team in a general sense, but man, it is very important for you to actually learn to do this. After that, Mike turned sour, saying, I was being weird and uptight about it. Oh yeah, it's me that's being weird. <laughs> he also kept prodding me with a, hey, are you there? Whenever I'd stop replying and try to fall asleep. No, obviously I'm not here. Obviously this conversation is over. Leave him on red. It's fine. I never thought that I, myself, would end up as one of those lovely maidens hounded by neckbeard texts like that. And yet, there I lay, basking in it. Maybe I am a fair maiden after all. Maybe we all have a bit of fair maiden hidden inside all of us. Just 
waiting longingly for a neckbeard to come and pollute it. Yeah, that's that's a good one. It's the fair maiden on the inside that counts. <laughs> Great! <laughs> I'm liking that. I prayed in vain for this to not be a repeat of the Lady Saber and Sir Sam incident that you should definitely listen to Red X Read if you haven't yet. I do love that compilation, but it's demonetized now, so um, it brings up some raw feelings for me, if I'm quite frank about it. <laughs> but anyways, Lady Saber was pestered the entire night before a huge test. But like Lady Saber, I couldn't turn my phone on silent because I had an alarm for the training the next morning. That alarm was at 5.30 a.m. It was 2 a.m. before I finally fell asleep. God, do neckbeards just never sleep? It's all that monster energy and Doritos that keeps them gassed up. <laughs> uh, the next day was just as grueling and considerably more difficult when you've only had a few hours for your body to recover from the day before. I dropped out of my car like a murder victim, shambling up like a newbie necromancer was nearby and trying their best, but didn't quite know how to animate corpses yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, practice makes perfect. Mike spotted me and decided that I totally looked like someone who was in the mood for a conversation. He stomped towards me in his cowboy boots, sporting a smile that assumed that we were definitely BFFs for life. Uh, hey man, you ready for the day? Oh my god, dude. Oh my god, leave me alone! <laughs> uh, just scream in his face, see if that drives the message home. No, I'm not. Y you kept texting me. Why would you do that if I wasn't responding and you knew that we were getting up early? He huffed and said, hey, Don't be such a baby. You have to wake up at all kinds of odd hours in this line of work, you know? Uh, are you sure you can handle it after all? Bro, don't worry about me. Let me worry about me, okay? God, he's just insufferable, even when he's trying to be your friend. I stared at him for a very long minute as my brain slowly chugged along, a few AOL dial-up sounds going off as it tried to process the information that it was receiving. Since I had the least amount of experience of the people enrolled and we were both some of the shorter trainees, he felt like I was a good target to consistently jab at like that and imply that yeah, I wasn't cut out for this. Come over here, come over here, pot. I want you to meet my good friend, Kettle. All right, Mike, whatever it takes to make you feel better while you're on the sidelines and I'm out here making entry. I don't know how he walks around with an ego that big and that undeserved. How is this real life? I always just let his words roll off me because I mean, what do they really matter? Why let it bother you when you can just try and prove it wrong instead? God, OP's got a great mindset, honestly. I'd be out here looking for some petty revenge, you know, getting some backbiting started, but OP's just like, whatever, water off a duck, all right? <laughs> I didn't make drama out of it because no matter how misplaced or warped it was, I still felt a sense of camaraderie towards Mike as he was part of the team for now. <laughs> I suppose that I still held out hope that underneath it all, deep down, Mike had the decency to view us the same way. No way. He, he's got a massive case of I am the main character syndrome. There's no fixing this. There's no way you can fix this. It is what it is. This time, though, there must have been something on my face because he frowned and toddled off towards his truck as I swayed unsteadily by my car in blessed solitude, fighting for my life just to keep my eyes open, I knew that today was going to suck. Uh, remember when you used to be able to stay up all night as a, as a young person? And it was a lot of fun, but now as an old person, staying up all night just means that the, the next day is going to be one of the most miserable days of your existence. I can't do it. I can't do it no more. Maybe I need to switch over to that Doritos and do diet and then I can do it occasionally. <laughs> the first drill of the day was a pretty dismal one, carrying each other up a set of stairs. Simple? Yes. Easy? No! <laughs> Getting a normal body 
up a staircase is hard enough, but someone in full firefighting gear is a whole different ball game. The air bottle constantly snags on the steps, and they have like 50 pounds of extra weight added on, and it just fills you with despair. When you're completely gassed and someone shouts, Keep going! You're halfway there! <laughs> Yay, halfway! <laughs> I looked over at Gentle Giant, craned my neck up, and then craned it up even a little higher to meet his gaze, and we agreed to go first. He had a pretty easy time, hauling me around like a kid with an action figure, and he said, Oh, it isn't bad at all! You've got the dopey! Yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, are you going to be helping me out a little bit, like on the sly? Just use your hands to pull yourself up a couple steps. Please, God, I need this. Now, Gentle Giant, I do thank you for the encouragement, but I'll be honest, I feel like you had uh, a little bit of an advantage there. <laughs> Just a skosh. Remembering why I wanted him for a partner in the first place and Mike's doubting words... I took a deep breath, and I got to work. God, OP, you can do it, all right? Dig deep, reach down, show everybody what you got. Turns out Gentle Giant was right. And it really isn't so bad. It is miserable, but it's simple. Breathe deep, pull with all your might, and just get them that one step higher. Just one step at a time, and chip away, little by little. Repeat until you reach the top. I'm not sure how long it took me to complete my death march with a fallen comrade, but from the reactions of the trainers, it wasn't embarrassingly long like I was afraid of. And honestly, it's a lot easier to get him to go downstairs, right? <laughs> Just unclip them from your belt and like jump on their chest and ride them to the bottom. Yeehaw! <laughs> <laughs> when it was Mike's turn, he yanked at his partner's shoulder straps a few times, producing no movement, and then promptly gave up. God, you are just the worst. <laughs> uh, he then stood up to look right at me. It took me a moment to realize that he was expecting me to come step in, and I just laughed. <laughs> uh, uh, are you for real right now? Helping out someone struggling after the trainers have relented and giving permission is one thing. But no, sir, I'm not going to happily jog my way over and do this for you when you haven't even broken a sweat yet. I was still gasping for air from my own ordeal. Dude, how could he be so ridiculous? <laughs> uh, uh, I guess I can't do it. OP, please, I summon thee to my side, Chauncey. <laughs> Treat him like your butler. I wish to see him at the top of the stairs. Now make haste. <laughs> uh, who do you think you are? The trainer showed him, again, the technique that we learned that uses your own weight for momentum instead of just tugging ineffectually at the shoulder straps. He managed to get up a handful of steps before plopping himself down with one of his patented uh, I just need a breather moments, which of course flipped their switch from understanding teacher to demon wolf blood rage. <laughs> uh, look, if you just keep going, it's going to be over faster. You can take the breather once it's all over. Not even their verbal lashings could bring Mike up to an acceptable pace, but at least he was making progress. Just progress that was agonizingly slow. Well, he is a gamer. I'm going to have to go with get good, scrub. <laughs> What's wrong, Mikey? You can't do this? You try to play duos IRL? You need a hard carry all day, every day? I don't even play ADC. Tank for life, all right? <laughs> uh, when he finally reached the top again, needing to be told that he had to get his partner's body up across the finish line and not just his own, he said, eh, eh, how is that? Faster than OP? <laughs> uh, you're kidding me, right? <laughs> Why you gotta put yourself on blast like that? What's going on? The trainers both gave Mike the unblinking gaze of a RuneScape NPC until one of them casually pointed to Mike's partner, 
flatly stating, Oh, he, he's been dead, son. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not picking Mike, okay? He's just the worst. He doesn't even want to try to save people. He can't even save himself. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't ask me to compare times, all right? You guys dead. That's all we need to know. We all struggled through the rest of the day. Mike tried to utilize his entire move set and cast Disrobe Self, but the trainers were not playing that game. When he ripped his helmet off and tossed it away, it was quickly picked up and thrown back at him with the gusto of a last second Hail Mary. I guess the captain had a, a, a little bit more pity, but these trainers, yeah, they ain't playing around. We're not doing silly Mike games today. It's only my games, trainer games. The drills seemed to get more difficult as the hours passed. Practicing the Denver drill where you have to get someone up out of a window in a three foot wide corridor or hauling each other up a floor using nothing but elbow grease and a handcuff knot. Mike, hearing the words handcuff knot, graced us with yet another hilarious joke about robes and bedroom shenanigans, but only with super hot chicks because you know, that's the kind of guy that Mike is sitting around playing Fortnite. <laughs> I only play Fortnite with the hottest chicks, right? Not like Ninja, whose wife won't let him play with girls on stream at all. LOL! <laughs> Ninja ain't even relevant. I don't know why I brought that up. <laughs> uh, our response as a team was to grab the goober and hog tie him, using Mike as our first offering to the altar of sweat as we hoisted him up to the second floor. Mike spent the entire ride squealing and flailing, desperately wishing that he had quick saved before choosing such a high risk dialogue option. Yeah, or at least, you know, get some more charisma at the very least, up that speech skill. What do you think Mike's speech skill would be IRL? Probably like a nine out of a hundred. He's got that Fallout 4 dialogue tree where you say something and it doesn't affect anything. <laughs> uh, as time wore on and the sun got low in the sky, we were all on our last legs, panting, dripping sweat, and splayed out wherever there was shade and enough room to lay down. Our spirits were raised when the trainer said that we only had one part of training left to get through. Oh yeah, you guys can do it. It's almost over, but this is probably the most miserable part, isn't it? <laughs> when they said it was going to be really fun and enjoyable, our spirits were shattered as if struck by a paladin's warhammer, shaken by what these two would consider fun and enjoyable. Oh, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. <laughs> as it turns out, our fears were unfounded. And our spirits leapt again, now getting severe whiplash from the roller coaster of the heart. We were going to get to do drum roll, please. Bailouts. I don't know what that is. <laughs> we would be jumping out of windows, sliding down ladders like a video game. All kinds of fun action movie stuff. Now oh, that does sound pretty cool, though. And then I'm going to slide across the hood of my car, Dukes of Hazard style, and jump in there and run away from Boss Hog, and everybody's going to think that I'm super cool. This is what's going on in Mike's head, don't you know? <laughs> First up was bailing out of a second story window, and man, I was pumped. First off, it just seemed flat out fun. Second, as much as I loved Gentle Giant, I'd finally be doing something that didn't involve a war with gravity as I strained to haul him around. Are you still paired up for this? Why do we need teamsies for jumping out the window? <laughs> uh, I guess we'll find out. With one trainer up top to make sure we anchored our rope correctly, and the second at the base of the building to man the safety line, you'd loop the rope around your wrist and pinch it together in front, gripping the rope as tightly as you could, and you'd jump out your own hands acting like a repel device. Holding tight would lock you in place and gently loosening would send you slowly down. It really is quite fun to do. But yeah, please probably don't try this at home. This is only for trained professionals, okay? <laughs> Not something I'm ever going to experience, I'm sure. 
A few people had trouble with it at first. A few people mostly meaning Mike. Big surprise. I don't know if it was a technique problem or just a strength problem, but he could just not get a good enough grip on the rope. The trainer manning the safety line would start sweating as soon as he'd see Mike at the window, knowing that he would have to bear all of his weight from crashing down to the ground like Sephiroth casting Meteor. The Final Fantasy VII plot could have been so much shorter if old Silver had just asked Mike to rappel out a window for him. God, now we're mixing in some, some video game references with our RPG stuff? I never imagined that there were nerd firemen, but uh, I guess now I know. Now I know for reals. The soft, encouraging words from the trainers of, God damn boy, hold the damn rope! <laughs> uh, didn't resonate with Mike, but I'm grateful for that because Mike would keep failing and have to redo it. And we'd all get another turn jumping out and rappelling down. So thank you, Mike, for taking that one for the team and letting us have some fun. Hell yeah. The first and only thing that he's ever done properly. Congratulations, Mike. You failed spectacularly. <laughs> Our final hurdle before freedom was sliding down ladders. Sounds pretty fun and easy, right? Well, you'd be surprised at just what can go wrong when you fail your wisdom roll. The procedure is pretty easy. Hop onto the ladder from the window. Put your hand on the beams. Put your legs on the outside with your knees squeezing the beams. And slide down while you keep your head back so your bell isn't quite literally rung. Can you guess which step Mike forgot? <laughs> Does he even really have a bell to ring? I bet he smashed his face in the ladder. He's just like, yeah. What happened? Am I bleeding? It's okay. I don't know if anyone remembers the video of the guy playing Bloodborne and going down a ladder with a big helmet. <laughs> uh, but it so beautifully <laughs> and so perfectly demonstrates what happened to Mike. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I'll bet anything right here and now that he tells people war stories about getting all those dings in his helmets during battles with old man fire. <laughs> uh, God, it's so good, dude. Especially with the, the, the video accoutrement. It would not be the same without that. Oh, beautiful. This is so good, OP. Thank you. As we wrapped up training, Mike, now a bit dizzier than the rest, we thanked the two trainers for the time and effort that they put into teaching us, and we were free to go home and crash. Is Mike gonna come with you? Oh god, he's gonna be like, let's play some Fortnite for reals, bro. That was a joke, that was a joke! Leave me alone! <laughs> I had been doing fine throughout the day, but the moment that my body knew that it didn't need to perform anymore, all of the exhaustion and lack of sleep came crashing through my system at Mach 5. Barely conscious, I realized Gentle Giant was trying to say something to me, and after repeating it a few times, my brain caught up and realized he was asking if I wanted to go to a celebratory dinner with everyone else. Oh, the hardest decisions require the toughest wills. Yeah, I guess I'll go. <laughs> we earned it, didn't we? As much as I wanted to go home and sleep, I wanted to spend time with my friends even more. So I happily agreed and we went on our merry way on the hunt for sustenance. Yeah, give me like three, four vodka Red Bulls. I'm going to be good. I'm, I'm going to bounce right back. <laughs> I always feel bad for the poor server that has to deal with a group of stinky firefighters desperate for food like the horde of starving barbarians that we are. But our waitress was very nice and understanding. She was also quite pretty, which of course Mike took notice of. Oh God, well, just when you think the trash fire's over, it starts flaring up again. He tried flirting with her as she just tried to do her job, but he was silenced and shut down with brutal efficiency. Not by her, but by the firefighters in training who knew what Mike was like and who also happened to be starving and wanted to just get their orders in. 
Honestly, even if she was looking for somebody, <laughs> I mean, chicks love a man in uniform, right? But if she was going to pick one of these firefighters, I'm sorry, Mike, you are at the, the very bottom of the list. You know what? Probably not even on the list at all. Yeah, you're a firefighter. Technically, I guess. <laughs> but even that's being generous. So Mike's next strategy was to try and get one of us to ask her if she had a Snapchat and then proceed to give the gathered intel to him. And of course, this was met with a firm absolutely not. Yeah, can't harass her at her job. Might as well harass her on the Internet. J just Mike, why? Just eat your food and shut up. <laughs> Around this time, I got a text from my sister that had a wonderful picture of her holding a new cat. Mike glanced at my screen and said, Whoa, no way that's your hottie OP. What's she like at bed? Oh my God. <laughs> uh, it's my sister, you coom brained goblin. Leave me alone! <laughs> I shouted, Stop! Loud enough that it actually got through to him. What a pig. I informed him that it was disgusting to say that, that she is my sister and then groaned internally when I saw his eyes light up. Uh, sister, huh? Uh, give me your Snapchat. Oh, God, Mike, why? Why are you doing this? One, adults don't use Snapchat. And two, I'm not feeding my sister to the, the fat neck bearded wolves, okay? God, I let Mike down gently kindly informing him that I would headbutt a belt sander before I let him know the first letter of her cat's name, much less any contact information. <laughs> yeah, real smooth, like a gentleman. Headbutt a belt sander. <laughs> we finished eating, and I had to drag Mike out to keep him from hassling that waitress again, giving some handshakes and hugs in the parking lot before splitting off and heading to our homes. I fought with all that I had to stay awake and alert during that drive home. Honestly, you probably shouldn't be driving at that point OP. Maybe get a Uber. What's that they say? Like three hours or less of sleep a night and you're functionally drunk. So uh, even though you can't be arrested for it, it is, it is still a dangerous thing. But I'm glad you made it home safe is what I'll say. Unfortunately, here is where our story ends for now. And I hope you enjoyed hearing about Mike's May Day. Don't worry, he did not get signed off for that training and will not be sent in to save anyone. I realized that part one was really long, probably took too long, so I apologize for that. And I'm trying to find a good balance with length. Thank you for understanding and thank you for reading. Stay tuned for part three, the dramatic and action-packed conclusion to Mike, where he ends up in extraordinarily hot water with the chief of his department. Honestly, I'm so glad that we get more Mike Tales. I don't even care what you're writing about, OP. I just want more of this RPG sprinkled ambrosia that you've offered. A lot of times it's hard to take a gamble on an OP that I haven't dealt with before, but this, this is beautiful. This is the best, or at least really amazing. I don't know, I don't know about the best. People always ask me about the best neckbeard story I've ever read. That's like picking between your kids. I love them all, you know, equally in their own ways. Okay, that's the pragmatic answer. <laughs> but yeah, this is really good. I'm always excited when I see some more of uh, Firefighter Mike. I'm sad that part three is going to be the conclusion, but I hope that you'll uh, cook up another neckbeard story for us. Mike 3, the finale. Oh, you hate to see him go, but you love to watch him walk away. That's what she said. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> there you go. Just get you in the mood for a little bit of Mike. Am I right? If you haven't seen the first two episodes, link to that playlist in the description. It's a short one. There's only two before it is, but they're worth watching. Hello, everyone. Hello, user acceptable tackle 79. God, those auto-generated Reddit usernames, they're just the worst. <laughs> but that's okay, I appreciate the story. I don't mean to dunk on your username. Maybe you made it up. Maybe it wasn't Reddit. Maybe I'm pointing the blame in the wrong direction. Anyways, I bring to you the finale of the Mike Saga. 
Oh my God! You'll finally get to hear how Mike performs outside of training on a real fire, and it is exactly what you'd expect. Thank God that no one was hurt. Oh my God, they actually put him in a real fire? <laughs> well, that just seems like a failure on the department's part, Jesus. Truth be told, I've had this story done for a while. I've just been putting off posting it because I don't want this adventure to end. Aw, see, I feel kind of the same way, but also I don't want to feel like, like it's stretched out or something like that, like we're retreading the same ground. It's okay for it to come to an end. So I am sorry for the long wait and let us return to the wonderful world of Mike. Yeah, wonderful world it is. But first, allow me to share something juicy. Ooh, spilling the tea is what I believe the kids call it. Yeah, I, I don't know anything about that. I don't even drink tea. <laughs> if you thought Mike's redemption run of Fire Academy in part one was bad, well, guess what? He went for lucky number three. That's right, he attempted it for a third time. Third time's the charm, he's gonna get lucky. And then people are gonna die in a fire. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why at a certain point they're just like, nah, not you. <laughs> You're not cut out for this, okay? Go get a job folding sweaters. This is not for you. Evidently, Mike power leveled speechcraft because he convinced his department's chief that he was really ready for it this time. <laughs> and the chief believed it. He would take it seriously and give it his maximum effort. The chief put a lot of faith in that promise of Mike's and went pretty far out of his way to get him enrolled. Yeah, you, you putting your neck on the line for this like proven loser? Come on, man. <laughs> the chief is supposed to be smart. Maybe the chief is not fit to be chief anymore. Maybe we need to dethrone him in Mortal Kombat. I'm pretty sure that's how it works in the fire station, right? I don't really know. <laughs> Will Mike return such a kind gesture with a humble attitude and a strong work ethic? Will he finally prestige his character class from peasant to flame quencher? Does the Doom Marine like to rip and tear? So many questions, so many obvious answers. No, no, and yes, in that order, okay? Taking bets. <laughs> Easiest money you ever made. I wasn't personally there, so I can't give a first-hand tale about how this third run must have gone, but I did wander around for you and dug through enough dialogue options that it painted a clear picture. Oh, I am gonna miss these RPG references within the story. That's like one of the most delicious things ever. It meshes with the channel on so many levels. I heard some vague talk of a creature that lurked in the dark corners of the room, hiding in the shadows. Rumors of a dark helmet, marked with craters that could have only come from years of hard-fought battles. Legends that this mythical beast had once held back the flames for an entire fortnight without any sleep whatsoever. Hushed whispers and darting eyes as they repeated his war cry. That's what she said. <laughs> He's even got me doing it. I, I, I kind of get it, honestly. As if worried that those words had the power to summon him to this very spot. Yeah, Mike learned absolutely nothing from last time. Surprise, surprise. He still thought that he was a complete stud and a physical marvel. Thought he didn't need any of those lay book smarts because of how good he was at the practical side of the job. And then he managed to suck at both. <laughs> how many times? How many times can we possibly do this before we learn our lesson? I don't expect Mike to learn his lesson, but surely the chief did, right? Please? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> that isn't the end, though. He at least stuck it out all the way through with his first two attempts. This time, he just kind of gave up halfway through. Boo! <laughs> Normally, I'd be fine with that. In fact, I'd even encourage people to switch paths when they realize that the one they're on now isn't where their heart is. But not like this. Not after somebody had stuck their neck out for you. I mean, honestly, can we say that we didn't see it coming? I 100% did. <laughs> I didn't know he'd quit halfway through, but I did know that he wouldn't make it this time around. 
Hopefully now he finally puts it to bed. He finally accepts the truth that he's not cut out for this. Even the manner in which he quit is just the worst. Instead of talking to his chief and explaining how grateful he was, but he really wasn't ready after all, Mike just kind of stopped showing up to training. <laughs> what a douche. <laughs> uh, oh my God, there's no words. I know that it's a hard, scary conversation to have, and I truly sympathize with that, but I feel like it's one that you need to step up and have. Yeah, especially after somebody went above and beyond for you. It's so basic, dude. Mike knew that once you missed a certain number of hours, you had to be dropped from enrollment via national standards, so he purposely missed class with flimsy excuses in order to shift responsibility. It's a lot easier to be able to say, oh man, so unlucky that I got sick, or oh, sorry, I didn't think we had class. I, I was out of town. You are so far from being a It's one conversation. 10 minutes of pain, and then it's over, instead of going on weeks and weeks making up these little baby man excuses. Ugh, no respect whatsoever. As soon as he was dropped from class, Mike got called into the chief's office and was talked to in a manner that was, uh, not very sympathetic. He was aggressively told to sort out his priorities and give some hard thought to his goals for the future. When he was finally let out of that office, his morale had so many debuffs that he would be forced to flee from an encounter against a broken stick. And that's on top of his already naturally occurring debuffs. At this point, he would be trying to flee from his own shadow, right? <laughs> There's just nothing good or brave about this. Uh, I want to say man, but that's that's a stretch of the word, isn't it? <laughs> this left Mike on alarmingly thin ice with a near impossible road towards redemption. Let's see how he does this time on Mike Road Truckers. It's an Ice Road Truckers reference because you talked about ice. Never mind. It's fine. <laughs> you will now be observing the wild Mike in what is most certainly not his natural habitat. One might even be confused as to how he found himself in this habitat as if spotting a mind flare, casually strolling into a Denny's. Yeah, see, this is what happens when humanity gets involved, when nature is not allowed to take its course. You got monkeys running through New York, mind flayers in the Denny's, Mike's trying to fight firefighter stuffs. Oh, it's not a good look. <laughs> if you're holding out hope that perhaps Mike is wildly different when the heat is real, then fear not, because those hopes will be summarily crushed. Yes, <laughs> I've been waiting for that, honestly. I lost hope in the first episode. I'm like, please don't let this guy anywhere near a fire. But yeah, for some reason, they're letting him near a fire. Uh, terrifying. <laughs> the timeline is a little bit fuzzy with how it intertwines with this third Fire Academy attempt, but I'll try my best and ultimately culminate it in the end of this story. The first live fire experience with Mike happens right after our graduation from Fire Academy. When I say right after, I mean literally right after. As in, we were on our way home from the ceremony. We were still full of cake when the tones started going off that a bus had caught fire down the road. What a way to send the party off with a bang. <laughs> Did Mike graduate? He's just kind of rolling along with you guys. <laughs> Hey, I'm part of the party too, right? No, you're not. Please go home. Play Fortnite or whatever the hell it is you do. If you remember from part one, I mentioned Mike not being there because he didn't graduate, and he played it off like it wasn't cool enough for him to bother showing up, so he had a quicker response and a shorter route there. Okay, but you're not qualified. Somebody send him home. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? This whole thing is a farce! As each member of our class came flying to the scene, we spotted our comrade, bravely holding his ground and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the raging flames as he guarded the innocents. I mean, wait, sorry. What I meant to say was that Mike was standing there on his phone, filming for Snapchat. <laughs> 
Oh, we would expect nothing less, would we? <laughs> How old is Mike? Too old for Snapchat. That's all I'm saying. In defense of Mike, the bus was vacant and everyone had been safely out of it for a few minutes, so no injuries were involved. That being said, though, fires do have this notorious reputation for going out of control in the blink of an eye. Yeah, dude, the growth of a fire is multiplicative, not additive, okay? <laughs> it can jump to a building across the street with a strong gust of wind, and guess what? The entire city block goes up. But at least you got it for Snapchat, right? <laughs> uh, my hero. <laughs> I hate him. Uh, he also exchanged words with the captain who arrived moments after him, saying, Hey, you're late, man. I was here first, and I already made entry. I didn't technically get my certification from class yet, so I'm not supposed to make entry. You could get in trouble for me going in, you know? I mean, if you know all this, then why did you do it? He's stupid. He's so stupid. <laughs> uh... Oh, I'm so frustrated. Mike's entry that he was so proud of was standing two feet in front of the door to the bus. Oh, I don't think he knows what entry means then. <laughs> I don't think it would even be close enough to trigger the load point for the second half of the level. <clears throat> the captain that Mike had spoken to was not impressed. I heard him afterwards talking with some others and saying that Mike was a punk kid with a lot of growing up to do. No, he got it right though. <laughs> Standing out here on Snapchat, bro. Go home. You know why you didn't get your certification? Because you're not capable. You don't belong here. Go home. If you're curious about the Snapchat, I checked it after. He posted on his story saying, First on the scene, first to make entry. Firefighters are a different breed that most will never understand and fewer could ever be. I mean, he is partially right about that. <laughs> the only thing he's wrong about is labeling himself a firefighter. I mean, I guess he didn't call himself a firefighter. It was just kind of implied. What I do know is he definitely never will understand and he definitely will never be and thank god for that mike is not only heroic but humble as well <laughs> i promise that we do not all think like that honestly most firefighters i've met have been pretty laid back pretty cool same with most emts same with most cops for that matter although cops do seem to have like the largest portion of douchebags <laughs> But it's still a relatively small percentage, at least in my experience. The next notable encounter with Mike was when he paid our station's gym a visit. Bro, you, you don't belong here. <laughs> He's like a level 10 clinger, just a hanger on who hopes that if he visits the station enough and hangs out with the firemen, then he'll actually be one. Y you blew your chance three times. Stop it. At this point in time, he was about halfway through his third academy run. He was on shift with the training captain who taught our academy when Mike and another member of his department showed up at our door, saying they needed to use our fire hydrant to refill their tanker. All right, no problem at all, guys. It's right over there. Have at it. While Mike was waiting for it to fill with water, he got bored and wandered around the bay, spotting our gym. Oh, come on. <laughs> He's gonna do two reps and get tired. He'll be like, wow, these are so heavy. He'll be like, dude, that's a that's a 10 pounder, Mike. <laughs> Put it down before you hurt yourself, little guy. <laughs> the gym at my fire station has a huge whiteboard on it where anyone is welcome to come record their max lifts. Oh boy. <laughs> it inspires some light-hearted meathead competition and caveman rivalry with who can pick things up and put them down the best. Yeah, I want to be at the top of the list, but I'm not strong enough either. I know I'm going to hurt myself. I'm not trying to compete with a fireman. I make YouTube videos for God's sake. <laughs> uh, what's your max bench, bro? I don't know. <laughs> not, not even my entire body weight. What do you want? I'm not a, a, I'm not a gym dude. I'm not a physical fellow. I should get back into it though. I know wifey would love that. Anyways, 
<laughs> Mike ran his eyes over the board and eventually spotted my name and stats. Oh, yes. You are his competition through and through, OP. I do recall that from the second part. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Is this your long-term goal for three years from now or something? Cue a blank stare from the captain as if he were told to invest all his points in strength and then main a katana. That's right. You need dex or agility or whatever. I totally know how swords work. Don't at me. <laughs> Son, I saw him do it. What? No way, man. <laughs> like I'm going to believe that. OP is probably even shorter than I am. <laughs> yeah, that's what determines your max weight lift. How short you are. Are you? I, I mean, I was going to ask if he's dumb, but yeah, that's been proven already. <laughs> uh, uh, Mike's about to hurt himself, bro. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm proud of where I am physically, but my raw lifts are certainly nothing to brag about or be amazed at. They're numbers that anyone is capable of hitting with a bit of dedication. I sunk more of my points into constitution. And honestly, I think a good constitution is, is worth a whole heck of a lot. I don't think my intelligence or charisma is even that high. But with the constitution of these YouTube videos, hitting it every single day, yeah, you too could have a channel just like this one. Probably even better, honestly. High five, OP. High constitution builds. I'm with it. Mike really latched on to this event, and anytime someone would mention training or lifting, he'd throw out a comment about OP's fluff numbers, or say, you guys should really do a better job of verifying that the numbers on your board are correct. Okay, put up your number, Mike. You couldn't even lift somebody up the stairs. <laughs> uh, he's such a loser. He's so salty. I could be absolutely fine with him not being able to lift very much, but coming after people that can lift much more than you just because they can lift much more than you? Come on, man. <laughs> Rather ironic to be grumbling about padded stats when I know for a fact that he filters matches to play against lower tier opponents. I mean, that's fair. I do love a good Smurf account. <laughs> I get a Rainbow Six Siege and kill a bunch of level level 10s. I'm like, yes, I'm the greatest ever. <laughs> uh, they just don't know how to play yet. Don't fool yourself. It doesn't mean you're good, <laughs> but it is fun sometimes. It wasn't long after his visit to the gym that Mike fully demonstrated what he's capable of when the stakes are high. I was lazing around the gym with Gentle Giant when we got toned for a brush fire. It was in a neighboring county and had grown to 150 acres. Oh my God. <laughs> so they decided, yeah, okay, we really need some help here. And they called in the cavalry from all the local departments, including Mike's. Yeah, I thought you said help. Mike is gonna be a hindrance. Can we like tone everybody else and just tell that one specific guy to stay at home? <laughs> Actually, we got enough bodies, Mike. We're good on that. <laughs> Just take it easy. I was extremely pumped for my first wildfire on the job, but my excitement was rather short-lived. Instead of being given a hose line and told to get in there and go berserk like I had fantasized about, I was handed a radio and told to park my green rookie butt with a volunteer who was in his late 70s. Oh, man. <laughs> The two of us were sent deep into the woods, away from the action, to a house that wasn't in the path of the fire, but should still be watched just in case. Yeah, winds change and stuff like that, but man, I wanted to get some hose action. <laughs> Everybody likes hose, right? <laughs> uh, it's a stupid joke. That's a mic joke right there. There we sat, listening to Mike chattering on the radio and LARPing as an elite hotshot wildland firefighter. Yeah, I wonder if anybody's buying that except him. As time ticked away, I had nothing to do but stew in my own thoughts, and my frustration grew, festering inside. Why was Mike out in the thick of it while I was sitting here doing nothing? Did they really trust him more than me? Did I not do enough in training? 
Something touched my senses and drew my mind out of its pity party. I tried focusing but couldn't remember what it was, but then I felt it again. The wind was changing. Here we go. And blowing hard towards the house that we were positioned at. I looked over at the grizzled vet to make sure that I wasn't crazy and imagining things, but he was a step ahead and already calling in the change in the wind. We were told to sit tight and that a brush truck would be sent. Mike chimed in saying, I'm on it, I'm on it. Brush truck on the way. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> uh, oh, I just hate him. He's the worst. Don't give him anything to do. He's going to crash the brush truck. It's never going to get here. He's going to get lost. As the conversation ended, we were already smelling smoke. I hopped onto the truck and grabbed a few tools to dig a fire line. But as I started walking out towards the woods, the vet called me back. He said, don't you worry about that. I don't want you digging in there by yourself when water's on the way. By now, we had our eyes on the smoke and it was blowing our way at quite a concerning speed. It was all right, though, because Mike was on the way with the brush truck and we would knock that fire down. I'm sure you will. <laughs> you can count on Mike, right? If there's one thing that we've learned, <laughs> God, uh, we're all going to die. <laughs> I stood there with my armory of axes and shovels for what felt like an hour, but it couldn't have been longer than five minutes. My gut twisted a bit as we saw the fire itself, a massive line of flame marching its way forwards and consuming everything in its path. I gotta be honest, this is another reason I'm not cut out to be a firefighter. Even besides like the physical bit, mentally I'd be like, that's fire, we gotta go. My lizard brain is taking over and I am <laughs> I'm just running away. Probably much like Mike would do, except the difference is that I don't enroll three times at the fire academy, Mike! <laughs> As we were about to radio in that we really needed that truck, the speaker crackled to life before either of us could touch it. Uh, this is the brush truck. Yeah, I, I've been stuck in a ditch. Oh. <laughs> Why would I expect anything different, Mike? <laughs> Uh, you just saw this one coming from a mile away. Don't let that guy touch anything. He's like the King Midas of poop, right? <laughs> Everything he touches just turns to crap. Oh, I grabbed my tools and marched into the woods. We were not giving this home up without a fight. The radio continued to crackle in conversation and the old vet was yelling something at me, but I didn't really hear any of it. Talking was done. My brain was in go time. Good boy, OP. Look at him go. This is why he graduated. Mike didn't. <laughs> I hacked away at the ground as furiously as I could to try and make a break in the fire. But even within those first few swings, I knew it was too late for one idiot with a few digging tools to really do anything meaningful. Oh, boy. An entire house lost because Mike doesn't know how to drive. <laughs> As I kept stubbornly swinging away, I heard a new sound over the crackling embers, the crunching of gravel underneath a set of tires. Really? <laughs> oh my god, somebody pulled Mike out! Turning around, I was met with the beautiful sight of a new brush truck screaming up the driveway. The hero unknown rolled down the window and none other than Gentle Giant himself greeted me with a valiant cry of, Let's do some firefighter shit! <laughs> God. Uh, big man, I could kiss you! No, that guy, he's super cool, dude. There's always like a side character in these neckbeard stories that I just fall head over heels for. And this time it's Gentle Giant. MVP, Deus Ex Machina. <laughs> it turns out that I did get to live my fantasy and go balls to the wall. Yeah, got these hoes. <laughs> uh, the fire got perilously close and was licking the side yard, but it never reached the house. Thank God that people like Gentle Giant are out there in the world. And people like yourself, OP. On top of that, I'm glad that you got to do the thing that you wanted to do. It's all beautiful. It's all working out. The fallout for Mike was 
eh, probably more underwhelming than you're wishing for, as he wasn't immediately forced to turn in his firefighting gear. While he wasn't outright banned, he was asked to uh, take a break from showing up to fires for a little bit. Maybe for uh, quite a while, actually. <laughs> just, just, you know, cut him loose, pull the trigger. He's my dog, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> he's no good, okay? Like I said, he's a hindrance to everything. Mike swears that eh, anyone else driving would have gotten stuck, and it was just a bad luck. What went wrong, Mike? Did you forget to repair your gear at the last town, and it broke mid-combat? Your ability stats can be tricky with all those numbers. Yeah, especially when you don't have the wherewithal to pay attention to anything ever. Duh. <laughs> the people at the head of his department are as dubious about his professed innocence as you likely are, and he was still forced to take some remedial training for operating the apparatus. What's the apparatus? Like the boofing apparatus? It's like a funnel with a, a hose attached to it? Never mind. <laughs> I want to give Mike the benefit of the doubt and say that it truly was just an unfortunate event out of his control instead of being vindictive and assuming that he did something stupid. I don't like writing about people in a way that overtly leads others to hate them too, but yeah, Mike makes it kind of hard to do that. <laughs> he doesn't deserve the benefit of the doubt. At first, I'm like, okay, fine. But the longer and longer this goes on, how long can you keep believing, dude? <laughs> it's over now, okay? Oh yeah, uh, wanna know something fun? During his remedial training, Mike backed a fire engine into the side of a building. <laughs> uh, oh, what? <laughs> How do you even do that? Oh my God, he's just, he's too dumb for words. Why have we not gotten rid of him yet? <laughs> I know how comically and unbelievably inept the character must sound at this point, but hand on heart, a fire engine gave a building a little love tap. <laughs> I mean, at least he didn't like plow through the whole thing, but still, what are you doing? What happened, man? Did they swap some key bindings around on you? How do you even roll that low on a perception check? Maybe they hit him with every status ailment possible, then plopped him into the driver's seat blindfolded, petrified, and deafened. Yeah, it could be that. Fetal alcohol syndrome is also a hell of a debuff. <laughs> that is a cold-blooded joke. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mike. <laughs> it's probably the key bindings. You're right. Mike continued to gain accolades for his impressive feats of unimpressiveness, but eventually the weight of it all was just too much and the camel's back was broken. Thank God, that, that camel was strong. <laughs> he got a spine made of steel. It was unsurprisingly at yet another fire. For the time frame, it was right after Mike had been booted from his redemption run of his previous redemption run at the fire academy. <laughs> uh, why is he still even, like, allowed to volunteer? I just don't get it. A house had caught flame and was slowly working its way towards becoming fully engulfed. I was standing next to the training captain when Mike came running up with the grace and speed of a diseased mermaid who found itself stuck on dry land. <laughs> like an elephant seal or something. <laughs> with an SCBA pack, Slung over his shoulder, he boldly asked, Hey, Captain, where am I making entry with you? <laughs> Pause. <laughs> uh, nah, nah, you can't just say some stuff like that, Mike. Hit him with the that's what she said. How about that? <laughs> the captain, looking like an inquisitor that had just spotted a heresy most foul, said, Mike, I taught two of your fire academy classes. It's barely been a week since I personally dropped you from the roster. Now what the hell makes you think I'm letting you into that building? He then made it known that Mike's SCBA pack should be taken and given to someone who actually needed it. What a hammer blow to the ego that must have been. Yeah, but well-deserved. And honestly, his ego's like a balloon. 
It's just gonna bounce back and keep inflating anyways. <laughs> it turns out that even outside the building, Mike can cause quite a bit of trouble. Like I said, you need to cut him loose. He's making everything worse. The lesson here is never get complacent when clearing your ads in a raid. Follow through and finish them off. Yeah, and you gotta move fast enough that, you, that you're not worried about respawns, right? And if there's one person holding the entire raid back and, and you're getting respawned on top of, maybe you need to boot that person. I understand mages need to drink and all that, but you shouldn't be taking 10 minutes to drink, all right? That's, that's 30 seconds at most. Use evocation. <laughs> it's like a World of Warcraft reference. Uh, uh, I was inside with the captain and a few others when a window shattered behind us. Oh, God. <laughs> We all stared down at the shards of glass crunching beneath our feet and looked up towards the now broken window to spot Mike looking proud and holding a Halligan bar. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> He's so dumb. Uh, why did you break that window, Mike? When asked just what the hell he thought he was doing, he informed us, uh, ventilating, obviously. Duh. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's what you call it. Go home, Mike. Why are you back? I thought we sent you home already. We're done here, dude. <laughs> he is insane. Just randomly busting out windows willy-nilly is one of the absolute worst things that you can do in a fire. The shards of glass are almost a non-issue compared to the risk of creating flow paths that inadvertently draw the fire into the room roasting the people inside. You like firefighters so much, Mike, you never watch Backdraft, that movie from the 90s, right? <laughs> Maybe you learned something. Probably not, though. Probably sit there, watch the whole thing, be like, I'm just like the main character. <laughs> I've read so many line of duty death reports now where that exact thing has happened. It's not a melodramatic exaggeration to say that Mike could have put us in real danger from his ventilation efforts. Oh, I see what he's really doing here. I think he thinks if he kills everybody else in the department, then he's got a sure shot at getting the job, right? <laughs> and then fire engulfs the whole town. He doesn't know how to stop it. And he just moves on to the next town. That is the way of the Mike. <laughs> The captain was understandably enraged at this potentially lethal situation that Mike could have created. We quickly finished our business inside, knocking the fire down and extinguishing it, and the captain went on the hunt. He was the predator and Mike was Arnold Schwarzenegger, but Mike didn't have nearly enough biceps to take on that challenge. When he finally stalked Mike down, he didn't immediately skewer him with the Halligan bar deciding that the double XP drop wasn't worth the jail time. He gave Mike instead the courtesy of asking if anyone had told him to bust those windows open, which of course, nobody had. <laughs> so he pulled Mike to the side and calmly explained that it's okay to make mistakes, just try better next time, buddy. <laughs> uh, and if that's really what happened, I'll eat my hat. No, I lied. Mike got smoked. The captain acted like he was trying to bludgeon Mike to death using nothing but words. After that, Mike had the grace, or more likely the shame, to let us hang back and finish our job for about five minutes. <laughs> uh, I love the way uh, OP does that. He's like, oh, this happened. No, actually, it was terrible. <laughs> Uh, you get like a nugget of hope and then you just you just dash it away We were inside the house again hunting down any last hints of fire to make sure that it was completely extinguished Standing in the garage. We heard the sound of a power saw quickly followed by a shower of sparks as it cut into the garage door <laughs> uh, Oh my god, we are all going to die down here the whirring blade sliced its way through, leaving a gaping hole as the metal was peeled away. Who else could have been standing there but Mike? Oh my god, dude. somebody punch him. This is the last straw, right? The real camel's back is broken this time. 
<laughs> He's broken the backs of a whole herd of camels. Uh, please, please, come on. He's not going to learn. <laughs> it's not time to play nicey nice anymore. Pull the trigger. Mike's epic action hero main character moment was ruined. As the captain walked to the door, three feet to the right of the hole that he cut, calmly turning the handle and opening the unlocked door. <laughs> uh, you're killing me, Smalls. What are you doing? Uh, uh, I, uh, the door was locked when I checked. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm sure it was. Maybe Mike just really likes destroying things. This is his way of busting windows and cutting open doors without having to do it in his own house. <sighs> in summary, besides a room of their house catching on fire, Mike left these poor people with the added stress of broken windows and a ruined garage door. That was the end. No more would be tolerated. It was decided that riding out good luck wasn't gonna cut it, and Mike would seriously hurt someone, eventually. God damn, dude. This is what it takes to get fired? <laughs> Almost murdering the entire fire team like 10 times? You, you knew, you guys all knew already. <sighs> I guess hindsight's 2020, but Jesus, finally, finally. <laughs> In addition is the fact that leaving people with more damage to their house than was ever necessary is just totally unacceptable. He handled it gracefully, playing it down the next day with a Snapchat post saying, I'm gonna take a break from firefighting. <laughs> Uh, read indefinite hiatus. I gave it a lot of hard thought and I just need to recharge. A dull blade cuts nothing. You are the dullest blade I have ever met, Mike. <laughs> uh, thus, our hero's wings were clipped. Yes, what a fall from grace. And everybody... <laughs> wiped some flop sweat off their brow. Oh God, thank God I'm not gonna die today. Mike's not on the job. Local legend asserts that Mike received a fine from the county for an inappropriate transmission over the radio. Must have been one hell of a, that's what she said. <laughs> He's still harassing him from the radio. <laughs> uh, I'm sad to say that this is the end of the story. And I do hope that you all enjoyed reading the finale. If anything worth writing happens, I will definitely create more tales, but I have no idea when or where it'll happen again. Beard encounters where I am are quite rare, akin to hunting a shiny Pokemon. If that shine came from the grease and the unique discoloration came from some poopy coom. <laughs> Honestly, I I'm so glad that Mike was finally put out of his misery. The LARP was allowed to go on for far too long. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> I don't understand. And I will wrap this uh, saga up with a song because we've gotten some really nice parodies on the subreddit recently. So uh, let's sing We Didn't Start the Cringing because we definitely didn't. That was all Mike. <laughs> we'll get into it right now. Do, 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 do. Do 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 Naruto had been martial arts, tutu'd beard out huffing farts, Pokemon on the bus, a pheromonal fuss, Pizza Hut with autism, Chris Trucker and his jism, CG buttholes with Fred Beard, we've just started getting weird. Do 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 Fedora tipping, tendy dipping, sweat dripping, pants ripping, honey mussy barbecue, chugging all the Mountain Dew, dick cheese, bad hygiene, drinking water from Delphine, schoolgirls, little ponies, these fake fans are total phonies, we didn't start the cringing, neckbeards always spread it since before the Reddit, we didn't start the cringing. 
No, it's getting louder, now my spine is powder. Dirty, crusty coom socks, hobo hippies boofing rocks, log toss or waffle stomp, your ass smells just like a swamp. Osgood moves to Ramtite's place, then his tragic fall from grace. La Ogra's gotta go, did you bang a leg bit, bro? St. Adelaide laying traps, denying gentle sirs their faps, duster in his eminence, row for anal circumference. Come on in, take his hand from another time and land, blood and thunder tabletop, that's the way we like to rock. We didn't start the cringing. Neckbeards always spread it since before the Reddit. We didn't start the cringing. No, it's getting louder. Now my spine is powder. We didn't start the cringing. Neckbeards always spread it since before the Reddit. We didn't start the cringing. No, it's getting louder. Now my spine is powder. Bowl of beard, orange fluff, what the hell was that stuff? Lavender, what wonderment, they are in the government. Wheezy beard is dirty smell, both of them can rot in hell. Snowman sends them feet to Jesus, our Velveeta stains all cheeses. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Richard Dawkins, Andrew Tate, those are ones the normies hate. Incel scarcity mindset, swag bug ride set. Trilbies are fedoras, poop or coom for stink auras. Chivalry or bushido, which way do you choose to go? We didn't start the cringing. Neckbeards always spread it since before the Reddit. We didn't start the cringing. No, it's getting louder, now my spine is powder. Katanas, beasts of ham, saber fencing with Sir Sam, guitar beards, new DUI, boofing water, God knows why. Stealth beard, gross dildos, wolf beard jumping out windows, pajama running through the woods, chasing OP's maiden hoods. Octopreg beard getting freaky, is it worth it for TCC? Boop beard locked away, what else do I have to say? We didn't start the cringing. Neckbeards always spread it since before the Reddit. We didn't start the cringing. No, it's getting louder. Now my spine is powder. Surrounded by your old tissues, debating waifus, manga and anime. Atheist, so you don't pray. Scratching your stinky nards, flipping, shuffling magic cards. D&D, &D, 40k, games the true elitist play. Creepy breathing, acting shady, that won't win. You, m'lady, take a shower, wash your cock, throw out that crunchy sock. Pit stains, beard lice, do you really think they're nice? Wiping your ass ain't a chore, I can't take it anymore. We didn't start the cringing. Neckbeards always spread it since before the Reddit. We didn't start the cringing. But when we are gone, they will re on and 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 on. And on. <laughs> uh, oh, it's so tasty, you guys. <laughs> This is probably the, the the greatest parody ever written. Extra bonus plus 10 D points if you can find out which which sagas are being referenced here because most of the large sagas were touched upon. Maybe this is the new Red X theme song. We also did like Cells at Work, which touched on a lot of sagas, but this one touched on a lot more. So big, big thank you to Tato Ferret. You know, he's a, he's a Discord mod. He's truly an old, old fan of the channel. And uh, he's one of the good ones. <laughs> he's a beard light like myself. And uh, he's always down to play some weirdos and waifus or blood and th thunder. And he, he's good for the tabletop. That's what the beard lights are nice for i hope that you guys enjoyed the episode that was a really great way to send out firefighter mike <laughs> i want to end most sagas with a parody song so that's what we're gonna try and do from here on out uh if you guys like the sagas hey that's great if you don't i don't know skip it <laughs> I, I do hope you like, comment, subscribe. As I might have said, uh, we got links in the description. You could share the video around Twitter, Discord, Facebook. Uh, we live stream this whole thing on Twitch. I'd also like to thank my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous Patreon patrons and channel members. Patrons. Sure, why not? <laughs> So thank you to starting with our channel members, Train Boy, that one get caught, Valley Eye Crane, She's a Tiny Boy, Angel Dark, Badass Misery, Skylar Rain, The Fez Wearer, Rosie Rainbow, Slow Spooner Jerry, <laughs> Shot Well, Heaven Set, Seven Seven Seven, Robert Thibodeau, Jack McQuitty, Grim Strive, AJ Collins, Tooth Plushy, Corey Arts, Kelly Clark, Florentin Glaver, Dungeon Bat, Billy Dean, Robert Waits, Brandon Ashcraft, Phantom Danica, Organic Steve, Skylar May, Morning Star, The Gypsy Barber, Fire Drake, Samantha, Desk Flagship, Buy Two, Get One Hand. Heading over to Patreon, we've got Harley Owen, Robert Waits, Camille Sarah, Chance, Blue Kraken, Dixie, Ellipses, Captain Clown, Jerry, Hong Kong, Deku, Esteban, Organic Steve, Double Mac, Monster, Dad, 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 Billy D, Bitch Gremlin, Blade the Hero, Bronze Cracken, Commander J-Tank, Comrade Mooney, Destiny Piper, Dr. Larks, Aaron Arrow, Erratic, Mechanic, Eastmars, Fluxer, I don't have friends, I got tend
Pro Zombie Studios, Fire Drake, Gizmo Jack, Hadrian BR, Irish Pirate, Lost of Blue, Marvel, and a Mutiny. It's time to get a bet. I got all of Jay Amcoon, Jerry Smith, Jerry Kitsune, the original Jerry, Jerry, Jerry Blacktail, Jerry Outlaw, Mother Trucker, Hong Kong, Jerry, 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 I'm begging you, please don't take my beat. <laughs> Jerry, Two Pucks, Jerry, K Jones, Nine, Kira, Crew, He, Cuddly, Kraken, Lady Tally, Grey, Undeal, Lady Awakening, Lauren Crow, Legend Maker, Lord Jerry, Leader of the Thunder Jerry's, Luke and Max, Lost of Race, Judge Driver, he wasn't a good friend of mine. <laughs> like and subscribe, Milady Nix, Melgar, the Destroyer, Method Fact, ah, not another Jerry, but he is though. Paragus, Soul, Phantom of Pine, Jerrykins, and Jerry Beth, Queens, Quaaludes, and Quack Myers, Red Wind, Rose, Jerry Miller, Sarita, the Lolita, Scarlet Kevin, <laughs> Sergeant Cat, Bergo, the Law, Silo Whip, Stephanie Gunner, Sign Up to Boost, the Grill, Tomorrow, the Gypsy Barber, the Littlest Who, the Witcher Fusky, this is even my final beard. <laughs> Tick Jerry, trying to find the bomb, get back to the real world. Vanguard, Angel, BC3, Viking Jerry, we can tag Seven Gargoyle or Clay. Arnold Boys, even dweebs, we can see the L train it. Maybe <laughs> a noble Jerry. All right, Red, for you, I bring Doritos, but I can't get expertise if they're drag beards. I know what to do. Emerald T-Tank, Emerald Alder, another stupid hipster. Atomic Jerry's Elephant, Penny Lake, Bartender Kelly, Big Dead Wolf, Promise Fine Horse Radish, the original different Jerry, Cake Jerry, <laughs> California Jerry Girl, Carcass, Chicago Panda, Coyote's Commissions. Wow. Oh, now. Yeah, I got that right. <laughs> Let's why leave it in. Cryptidies, the Fog Jerry, the Deftitude, the Dilf Jerry, Dwarfy Dude, Five Nights at Jerry's, Get to the Doodles, also commissions open. Jerry Boo's daughter, Ghost of Alpha, Graymon 365, Half Jerry in a track suit, Heat Knot, Rivia, Jerry, but with two S's and E, Jerry Springer, the results are in. You are not the neckbeard. Jerry, the sussy baka. Jerry's mom has got it going on. Jerry, old Rivera. Jerry Roxas, Jerry, role playing and kid marvelous. Lucian Lovecraft, Machia CD. Maybe next time is Duchess, Mr. Gas Mask, Non Viper, Not Invisible Angel, Raptor, Excel, and Dark Snob Jerry. The Snary, if you didn't know. Spoonie the Rope, Spoopy, Scary, Jerry Tom. Hey, we're in October for reals now. Susan Beard, if anyone has one more fun, I'm taking all the attendees. Yeah, you can say heck once as a treat. Thank you so much. <laughs> Techno Dubs, the Coffee Jerry, two knives. Third stuff, this is purely a mercantile transaction. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it is though. To infinity, Jerry and beyond. Tokyo Bird, Unkale, Bond, Venom Jerry. Throws two leader Mountain Dew. Grow my neck, beer, grow. It's Jerry time, hold Red X Morpher. Hygiene, it's Jerry time, hold Red X Morpher. Humility, and thank you to my $1 patrons as well. Bless up to all the Jerry's and not Jerry's alike. Look at them all, my God. <laughs> Uh, you guys just doing the most. If you would like to assist these people in supporting, that's huge. I love it. If you can't, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me. And I hope that you'll come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow in order to do so. You need to keep yourself safe out there. Wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe like uh, watching some old Red X videos. How about? <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it, and I shall see you in the next one. So until then, friends, bye-bye. It's alive! It's alive! <laughs>